Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the September 16th, 2014 regular meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would rise, the uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, we could just briefly, as we usually do, go around the table and everyone introduce themselves. I'll start on this side with Sonny. Sonny Kravitz. Gary's no, not here. Jim Waddell. Mike Pierce. Jones. Brian Lapham. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. David Wood, Vice Chairman. Stephen LeBrange. Bob Ladd. Richard Grenier. Jim O'Loughlin. Light Bluff. Joe Wisbowski. So as we, as the town is starting to prepare its budget, we are in a regular session tonight and we're still in an information gathering mode. We have asked town treasurer Ellen Lavin to join us tonight. Ellen, if you come up and join us here. Good morning. And we've asked Ellen to come in because sometimes with all the work that we do on the budget and all the work that the town manager does on the budget, we kind of lose sight that we do have a treasurer. And she has come in tonight to um, give an overview of what her office um, covers um, for the town. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Ellen. Why, thank you. Uh, actually, I've served in this position, I hate to say, since 1991. It's an elected position, as all you are. I uh, am re-elected every three years. And it was, it was strange when you say, well, what do you do? And I'm going, well, oh, I don't know. I seem to just kind of do it all. I mean, I don't write the checks. I don't make deposits. I do uh, reconcile about 17 accounts every month. There's obviously the operating account, which I call like the general fund. In that account, I have five separate accounts. I have two at TD, I have one at Provident, and I have uh, two at Citizens. I have uh, custody of the Hampton Heritage, Hampton Conservation. They have three accounts. There are two police accounts that I reconcile. And then I have a like a retainage account for Penta and Waterline when they did work at the beach. And I also, a few years ago, I used to handle a lot of the planning board accounts when people were building roads and people had to put money down. But now what they tend to do is get a letter of credit. Uh, I invest the funds. I would help Mike as far as going out to borrow. He and I would look at, uh, you know, different presentations. And we, he and I would work together and decide. This past spring, we worked on all of the refunding as far as lowering the interest rates on a lot of our uh, loans. We went out and refunded those and dropped the interest rate. So I don't know. That's basically what I do every month. It's, the general fund is a lot of work. There are approximately 1,200 checks that go through that account every month. And then, obviously, there's a lot of cash that comes in. What I do is I get a report weekly from the tax collector, the town clerk, and um, upstairs accounts receivable. And then monthly I get whatever credit cards have been charged and anything that's been deposited into the other accounts. So that's basically what I do. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Is that a full time position? No, it, it is not full time. So you work <coughs> What, 20 hours a week? Or? I would probably say five hours a week. Five hours a week? Yes. The biggest job is reconciling cash at the end of the month. That could take me almost five hours to reconcile cash. Because what happens is you get your bank statement. Yeah. It will say cash deposited in the bank. Yeah. And then what I have to do is make sure what they say is what I have. Yeah. And if it isn't right or if it doesn't jive, then I have to figure out why. Where's your office? Sir? At my office. I, I'm a CPA. I have my office at One Park Ave in Hampton. Park, yeah. And I actually, Paul was nice enough a few years ago, I have a little laptop. So what the bank, what I do daily actually is I go into Citizens, I run through every check that is cleared. I can go into the check register 
and click it off so I know how much is outstanding versus what I have in cash. So I have to make sure, obviously, we don't want anything bouncing. I do that with the uh, general fund and with the uh, payroll account. Now, do you work closely with the uh, finance? Uh, finance office, yes. Yeah. Very closely like with Mike. Christy. Or Christy Mike. now. Right. Yeah. Or daily? Or? Usually, if they have a question. I would think. I'm in at least once or twice a week because I have to pick up all my reports. I have, I actually physically, well, I don't physically sign the checks. I have a stamp, but I do sign every check that goes out of the town hall. And I'm not allowed to sign the check unless it's been authorized by the town manager. How are we doing on tax accrual notes these days? I do not know. Compared to previous years? I don't get into all of that. Oh, you don't? I'm just totally in charge of the money that belongs to the town. I see. Does the town do sweep accounts or, you know, because, I mean, it's, you know, know, the rate of interest is... Awful. Yeah. It's terrible. <coughs> and years of, well, years ago, we're going back years, I mean, when I first started here as treasurer, we used to borrow $18 million a year. And you'd borrow it in January, and we were paying like five or $600,000 a year in interest. So what I do, usually the first part of next year, I go out to the banks, and what I've, I secure is what we call a line of credit. Yeah. So we're allowed, because of our debt and what we have outstanding this year, we were only allowed $4 million. So if I borrow two, what happens is by the end of May or June, I don't have... There's very little money. So the payroll or you have the school, yeah. they have to be paid. That's uh, seven, that's 15, 1.5 million a month. And then we have Winnicunit that we have to pay. So what happens is very closely I watch what we have in cash and should I borrow. But if I borrow one, I can now only borrow three. Even if I pay it back, I can only borrow three. So it's... You know, one thing i curious, you know, Everybody has a mortgage. Yes. The bank is getting the money each month, and they're investing it for their own purposes. Mm -hmm. It would make a lot of sense to me if the town would let mortgage people, I or let people pay their taxes monthly. And you Actually, night we used to pay the taxes in this town Let's once see. a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I in 1996. I, or with a group of people, we went to the, the town to do semi-annual, which drastically helped this town. This year, I haven't borrowed any money. Yeah. So I mean, it's, you, know, you have to borrow in anticipation of getting the biannual. Of the taxes. Yeah. Yeah. And what's really great, if the, if the tax collector, like I think the taxes are due December 1st, if she can get that bill out November 1, yeah. People immediately start paying. Yeah. yeah. So well, it, it's constant yeah. washing, yeah. watching your cash flow. Yeah, it just seems to be logical. You know, if the town will let people pay monthly instead of giving it to, if the mortgage bank is getting it and the bank is making money on it. You're right. You know. But we would have to go to back to town meeting to do well, that. Obviously, it'd have to be one. <coughs> well. But you have to weigh the the difference. Would it cost more to have the tax collector send out a bill every month? Right. You know, you're sending out, what, 9,000 yeah. parcels? Mm -hmm. So is it, well, yeah, is it cost effective? You can do it automatically through a checking account. Why wouldn't the bank take the bill and keep it in escrow? Why wouldn't the bank just uh, arrange it with the bank to take it on, on, on 1 12th every month? They, they do. A lot of people have their taxes and in escrow. And just pay the town whenever they're ready to take it? Yeah, we would have to get done. permission. And look, there's some, some towns in Massachusetts that <laughs> have to go quarterly. To keep this going on. Yes. I'm saying just put it in escrow. Work with the bank, put it in escrow. Right. Yeah, in other words, but the banks remit. The town treasurer does not collect taxes. I understand. Everybody, just let's keep the flow going. If it's going to necessitate us going to the polls to actually change something, there isn't a point right now to discuss right. it. So right. moving on. Jen? I'm, I'm, I'm all set. So am I. Hi, Hi, Ellen. Hi. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I, I see, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I see the town treasurer as, as playing a very important role. I think the budget committee plays a very important role. Mm -hmm. 
We're one of the critical elements of the principles of American government, which we provide checks and balances and within questions. the context of the government. And you, as a separately elected official, play a critical role in that checks and balances. So uh, I, I very much value your position. Um, did I understand you to say you work five hours a week? Roughly. Okay. Some weeks more, some weeks less. There are a number of, as I reference, uh, RSA 41, colon 29, which refers to Treasury duties. Um, and there are a number of these duties seem to be performed by people other than yourself, and you which get reports. Uh, uh, depositing all monies, you don't deposit money. I do yourself. not deposit. Right. I can't. Well, the problem is you have to have separation of duties. Right. So I could no. I couldn't deposit monies and open the bank statement and reconcile cash. That would not... Well, I mean, these are, these are the duties that are listed in, in the RSA, I but I, I, let me, please let me finish. It also says in one, of the, in one of the sections in the RSA that the Treasurer may delegate deposit, investment, record-keeping, or reconciliation mm -hmm. functions. So it's not like, you know, you have to do these things if you delegate them. Correct. And it says, provided that such delegate is, delegation is done in writing and includes written procedures. I assume that's been done, and I'm wondering if we could get a copy of that written procedure and agreement. Sure. Great. Thanks. No more questions. Sure. Good, nothing. Thank you. Thank you. I picked up on the fact that we didn't spend any money this year, borrowing any money? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. We have How to get through November. Right. How much have we saved so far? On um, borrowing, you know, the rate is so low, it's like 2.75. Mm-hmm. So we've... Last year, I think I borrowed two million, and then we paid it back by the end of July. Okay. But, so but what Mike and I, <coughs> what happens is when we have a lot of construction going on in town, mm -hmm. sometimes there's a lag between, obviously, contractors want to get paid, and we get the money in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the money goes out of the general fund, and then they reimburse us. So like. This year, there has been no construction, so I don't foresee borrowing, but I don't know what's coming between now and November. <coughs> but so far, so good. And the other thing I heard was that, and, and I, I agree with it, when once the bill goes out, people do do their best they do. to pay the bill. So if we moved the date back by 30 days, does that require anything special? Other I than think you have to go to the state so that they set the tax rate because they can't send the bills until the rate has been set. Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? I mean, is that's that up to you? Well, it, yeah, it's new yes. territory for me, and that's why I guess I'm asking the question and what would be involved in doing that. Because going forward in the future, if that would bring money in sooner and keep us from borrowing money. Mm -hmm. that's right. Then it may be something that perhaps we should consider. Eileen, can I? Can I address that? Because I sure. happen, to, happen to know what the answer is. Right. Okay. Because I'm the treasurer of the village district. The, in the case of the village district, there's an MS-34. The town, Ed Tinker, prepares, along with the financial director, prepares, I think it's, I don't know if it's an MS-4, I think it is, mm -hmm. for the town. Mm -hmm. it is. And mm -hmm. they, the deadline for that is September 1st, that it has to be sent to DRA. And then... DRA, of course, is getting our, the town of Hampton, the school boards, the, you probably have one as well with the school board that's due September 1st. I think the school goes with the town, am I correct? They probably do their own. Right. Yeah. And, okay. And so, um, so that you have to understand, of course, DRA has like three employees for the whole state, so they're getting all this stuff all at once. Correct. And so they have to go through it. Now, I know that what will happen is that by the end of September, Somebody from DRA will contact me and say, do you have anything you want to change? Are we final? Is this good? Okay. And then Ed Tinker, financial director, myself, the tax rate is set. Usually around by October 14th. That's what we try to get done. So that then, once the tax rate is set, then the bills can be printed and sent out. But as far as backing that up, it's the it's the DRA of the state. Correct. The, they the forms that, so it's sort of the state is 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 directing us towards the uh, what what day it's going to be. So I don't see how we could back that up because you won't have the tax rate set. 
But before we were SB2, didn't you meet earlier in the year? Why am I thinking they, that I remember them all going in September well, I, years I ago. haven't been the treasurer since 1991. Oh. So I can't go <laughs> back 30 years, years, you know, 20 years or something. But um, I think before SB2, I'm trying to think if they, I know you, you used to go earlier, or the selectmen, I can remember them all going to Concord. Well, the final bill is usually set in October. Right. Maybe the end of September, but. Correct. But typically, it's nearer the first week in October that you really get the, the rate. Mm -hmm. And that sets the second half bill. Correct. So you, so you can't, the first half is. Half, half of, of the prior year. The December bill. So that's. That's kind of established, and it just comes in July, mm -hmm. June through the first of July. But the October one, you have to, it has to go through the state. You have to Correct. set the tax rate before they can send the bill out. And they're hoping to have all of that before the October end of October, one. so that they that they can set it out the very first of November. You have 30 days. Correct, because you want the first. bill to go out, right, everyone right. needs 30 days to right. pay the bill, so if it right. goes out on the 15th of November, then it's the 15th of December. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just trying to Help. Cut, down, cut down anywhere we can. But, it's you just know, procedural. actually in the last few years, there's only been a few times that I had to, had to borrow. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been that, that tight. You it's know, been a big change from the annual to... Right. Oh, semi-annual semi -annual. really helps. And I think that it helped the taxpayers of Hampton also because in, instead of having an $8,000 bill in December along with Christmas and your oil and everything else, you were, you know, you were paying it over time, which was better. Well, thank you, everyone, for your input in that. Thank you, Stephen. David. Thank you for coming. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, you I haven't finished. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. You haven't finished. Yeah. Well, that was the answer to the IRA question. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. I've got to say, if you've got 17 accounts that have to be reconciled every month, God yes. bless you. Because <laughs> I only have one. And it's like, whoosh, as you know, Bob, every, after I've reconciled it, I always send an email out to the, to the uh, commissioners. It's done again, you know, because it's really, you know, you know how when you reconcile, if you, there's an error, you have to find it. You can spend hours. Well, no. Well, I, it depends. If it's three or four cents, I'm not looking. Well, no. I do. I do right to the pen. Oh, no. Well, no. Repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figure, I figure when we're putting $50 million through the bank on an annual basis, three cents is not important. And in, 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 cor in the corporate world, it could be a couple thousand, and they just, they just write, you know, that's fine. Close enough. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that you said that as you get towards the end of May, you start, you know, the funds start going mm -hmm. down, and that's you're paying uh, 1.3 or whatever it was to the uh, the school. Um, you're paying 1.5 to the school, and then I also have to pay when it cut it. Cut it, and also There's 750. That was another thing I changed. The schools used to get their money, their whole allotment, the first of every month, and then I said, well, why do you need that? You don't need a, your 1.5 on on June 1. <laughs> Can we split it? And you know, it gave me two extra yeah. weeks. Right, and that the same thing with the uh, the village district, the Hampton Beach Village District. The agreement that we have is that you cut that check for it this year. I think it was one hundred and eighteen thousand. Correct. The first of June, the first of July, first of August. But I've got to say that in the case of at least the village district, I don't know about the school system. Um, if I would, I could tell you that if you contacted me and said, "Can you wait a couple of weeks?" rather than me going out and borrowing the money just to pay you so I can put it in my checking account. And, and I don't really need it, perhaps. I don't know about the school. Uh, if, they could, if they could do the same thing. No, but it just well, if you there see, was a my contact, feeling if you said to me, if you said, Steve, can you wait a, a three weeks? And I'd say, yeah, I'd rather wow. do that than, yes, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Rather <laughs> than you going out and borrowing money. I mean, it's my taxpayer's money, too. So... But you see, my feeling is, I, I must say, I am the school district treasurer also. Exactly. So I wear both hats. Mm -hmm. But my feeling is, is their year end is June 30. And all of the money from the town should be in their account by the end of June. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, I, and I will be honest, I get paid every other week or every, twice a month from the town for the school, but I may hold their check. 
until I think they I need see. it. Yeah. But, then by the end of, but then by the end of June, it's they do have it It's working together. All. Everybody working together. It is you know? working together. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, sure. years ago, it, I think it was more, in, more important with interest rates, you know, as far as borrowing and all of that. But it, it is working <laughs> together. You know, I, I don't need $758,000 for the school district every other week. Mm -hmm. But it, all of it is in there by the end of June. Right. Okay, thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice it, to meet finally. you. <laughs> Don't ask any questions. <laughs> well, I have no questions. Thank you for your service. Ellen, who actually writes the checks for the payrolls? Payroll is Kathleen. Kathleen? Doheny. She's the payroll clerk. Uh, do I, let's see if I understand the process correctly. The department head submits to Kathleen his... Payroll oh. for the month. She I, puts the hours and not the month for the week. Oh, for the week. All right. Puts the hours into the computer and then she cuts the checks. She cuts the checks. Right. But she no. also sends a manifest to the town manager that he has to approve before I can sign any of them. Then how does it get to the finance director to reduce that line item in the payroll budget for a particular? Because what she gives to me. And I'm assuming I just want to, I want to see how the, the well, flow you know what it is. She had, well, she's working through the computer, so it's all done on the general right. budget. So that's how he knows police's, you know, it's all coded, police's this, specials or right. this, you know, fire, whatever. So it's all coded in so that it goes into their computer package. So that's, that's her portion of reducing. Or so the payrolls come in from the department heads. She enters the hours and then she, she cuts the, hours, the checks. She enters the hours, what they do, she cuts the checks, mm -hmm. right? And through an automated system or whatever, the finance director gets notified or electrical, however, to reduce that line item in the budget for that Correct. department. Correct. Correct. Right? Same right. with AP. There's an AP clerk. She does the same thing. A but there are accounts payable. I'm sorry. All right. But you see, each bill is approved by the department head before the accounts payable clerk will even cut the check. So that works, uh, let's say, an outside vendor who's supplying oil to uh, mm -hmm. Department of Public Works. How does that run? That I submit a bill to the town. You would submit a, a bill, I'm assuming, to the head of the Department of Public, uh, Works. Public Works. To Public Works. Yeah. The, I don't know who works down there, but she would probably code it, you know, like it comes out of account 8100, right. whatever. I don't know I what it is. I just want to understand the flow of how it gets into the, the pocket into the book system. of the town treasurer. Well, that's it has to get in here into this computer because that's how it all right. works. So the AP, they, they have a little stamp and it says that it's approved, and they tell them what account to post, mm -hmm. to post it to and then the accounts payable clerk will cut the check. Okay. And then there's a, there's a manifest, there's a register which goes to the town manager to be signed before I can sign any checks. It has to be approved. But you said somebody else signed the checks. No, I signed the checks. Yeah. All payroll checks too, right? Every, Every check. check right? Every right. check is signed by me, unless it's direct <coughs> deposit. Oh, unless it's what? Direct deposit. All oh, right. <laughs> you know, a lot of the payroll yeah. Yeah. Now that we've gotten to the 21st century, is all direct deposit. But all of the other checks are signed by me. Richard, if I might, uh, the written procedures that, that are, you know, she's going to be bringing or making available to us should delineate all of these points. They're excellent questions, but just so you know, they should be written down according to law. So, so they will be available to us. So. But that's how it works. So what happens Wednesday, tomorrow, mm -hmm. I will come to the town hall. I will actually go see the town clerk. I pick up a report from her. I go see the tax collector. I pick up a report from them, which runs from last week through usually the weekends on Tuesday. Yeah, I, I, money's, coming money's coming in. I don't know why it's Tuesday, but it's Tuesday, except at the end of the month, and then the month <laughs> may run 10 days of the week. <coughs> I pick up a report from them. I will pick up a report from Katie, who is the accounts receivable, and then I pick up the paychecks, I pick up the accounts payable checks, and I take them back to my office and sign them. Now, whose office is she in? Finance? Katie is in yeah. finance. There's three of them finance. up there. Yep. So I sign the checks, and then I bring them back on Thursday. Great. All right. Thank you. Yep. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. All set. You don't want it, huh? No. No. <laughs> no. You have to write 
But I see the physical <laughs> check. <laughs> I do see the physical check. Me. You actually, you actually sign all the checks. Yeah, yeah, the stamp. Well, I have a stamp, but I do right. sign them all. I do, wow. I do them all. I figured they did that upstairs. Thank you. Have to see you. There are some, actually, through the Hampton School District, they, I signed a stamp, and they do stamp them, but Nate has that under lock and key so that there is no access to that. Thank you. And actually, I do reconcile the Hampton School District. I know this isn't about the town, but he has a great bookkeeper over there. So she really does a lot of it. Where the uh, the town, I do, I do it all. I just, I never thought, I know I can delegate, but it was never, I feel I need to know what's going on, and I'm the treasurer, and that's my job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice presentation. Nice Thank work. you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting, you know, no one's ever asked what I do. Treasurer Levin. I know. <laughs> Thank you very much for accommodating us Thank tonight, you. Treasurer Thank Levin. you for the invite. I enjoyed having you. you, and you took some of the mystery of your office out. Some of the mystery. Some if of you want to come tomorrow, I may try to reconcile that. <laughs> 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 I do try to get that to uh, finance by the 15th of the month. I mean, I work really, unless there's a holiday, like, you know, Labor Day, and then the statement is always late, but I really work hard to get it to her. You know, it's not two months later that I'm handing her June. Right. So I do try to get it to her by the 15th every month. Thank you That's very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. Moving on, we have a wrap-up of SAU 90 for the school year 2013 to 2014. Now go forward into this year, and for anyone watching who might be a little bit confused, the school budget does not run the same as our municipal budget as far as dates go. And usually, every year at this time, we invite Superintendent Murphy and Finance Director Nathan Lunny in to go over everything that was spent and give us a little heads up of the future and things to come. I want to acknowledge two of our board members here as well, Virginia Russell and Rusty Bridal in the back, and Jerry Zanoy, of course, who represents um, SAU 90 on this um, committee. So with that, Nathan, I, I'm going to begin tonight. I'm going to um, hand it over to you. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate uh, our return visit. It's, uh, it's always a good opportunity for us to share uh, where we are and where we've been this past year and um, also where, where we see uh, the district heading. And I think it's, it's, a, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful venue for us to begin that work. And so I'm not going to waste a lot of time. Uh, we would like to jump right into our... Um, into a PowerPoint that will help you to follow what we'd like to do tonight. We have four goals for tonight. Is one to review the 13-14 year and the accomplishments. Uh, we will also do our financial review of 13-14, giving you an idea where we stand at the end in ju on June 30. Uh, update you on what we're up to this year and the projects and, and so forth. As you know, the budget's all set and approved, so we're working on that now. And also, uh, we are beginning to uh, begin our develop, uh, develop our budget for next year for the 15-16 uh, fiscal year. So uh, we'd like to focus on those four areas with you tonight. And um, please uh, stop us, uh, ask questions, um, and uh, we'll try to answer them. I mean, you're asking for interruptions? <laughs> I never mind interruptions. Yes. Um, and if everyone could wait until the end for questions, <laughs> and we will go around the table once. All right, in that round. Great, that thank you. That way we're not interrupting you. Great, thank you. Um, the, the mission statement hasn't changed, but obviously the focus of the Hampton School District is are the students. Uh, we serve approximately 1,150 students, uh, grades pre-K through eight. Uh, that means that we have students who are three years old. Uh, begin in our preschool program, and as you know, that program is a requirement through uh, the federal government, IDEA, uh, which, uh, which is law that says that we must provide education for those youngsters that are identified as disabled um, at, the begin at the age of three. So we do have a program for those youngsters in Hampton that are disabled, uh, a three-year-old program and a four-year-old program, and then when they're five, they, they, uh, they, they attend kindergarten. 
Um, Hampton is very fortunate. We have a full day kindergarten, uh, probably one of the best investments this community made. Outstanding program. Uh, I, I observe and spend time in the classrooms and uh, without a doubt uh, that that investment by this community back five years of three or four years I guess about four years ago um, was an investment that uh, it, it just it, it paid uh, I believe in great dividends this past year we had um, five goals and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the detail because we've done this with you last year and and again when we met in in, during budget deliberations, but obviously our number one goal is around curriculum and instruction, ensuring that we have high quality uh, curriculum and strong instructional practice in our classrooms. Let me interrupt and just say for folks that are here, in your hand up, the goals in detail are just behind the slides. In case, in retrospect, you want to reflect on what those goals have been, they're, they're here in your packet in detail. Uh, the second is uh, human capital resources. You know, our vote, most valuable um, asset in the district is our teachers and our instruction. Uh, again, uh, I think that the Hampton School District is very fortunate to have well-qualified, highly qualified teachers in the classroom. In addition to that, um, uh, support staff that um, make our schools just an excellent place to be. We employ between substitute teachers, um, co coaches, uh, teachers, uh, um, paraprofessionals, custodians, clerks, uh, supervisors, um, food service staff, uh, 308 uh, people in the school district. And so you can imagine that that is a critical piece uh, for the work that we do every day. In addition, uh, one of the goals we had this past year was around communication. Uh, we have a brand new website for the school district this year. Uh, we also have um, a new uh, parent information called Blackboard Connect where we're constantly sending emails and doing uh, reports to them uh, via a Blackboard Connect so that we have good communication. We've uh, been very pleased um, relative to uh, Channel uh, 22 and I'll get into that in a minute. The other one was around governance. The fourth, uh, the fourth goal was governance and those were the really the board's uh, goals uh, to address concerns in the district. Uh, that had to do with things like school calendar, transportation, uh, updating their policies and procedures. So th that's the role that that <coughs> particular goal played. And the last one is uh, finance and facilities, uh, making sure that our facilities were safe and clean um, and that we were um, wise in our spending and our finances. And I think the report that Nathan will give you will indicate to you um, the, that we took great um, great pain in ensuring that um, the money was well spent in the community. If I could just highlight some accomplishments in each of the areas in curriculum, we have revised uh, our language arts. We successfully in, uh, implemented a STEM program, very exciting at the middle school, grades six, seven, and eight. Our students are taking a class in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, Principal O'Connor is intent on making sure that his school is a uh, school that is very um, uh, in the forefront around technology <coughs> and <coughs> the areas of uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we also have begun discussions in Marston. You know, you, you've got to have a strong foundation and you've got to be able to feed kids into programs. And so uh, Principal Coster is doing that at grade, did that this year at grades three through five. And we also had a team of guidance counselors update uh, uh, their uh, co a comprehensive guidance plan for the district. And they actually just presented last week to the school board. So that, that was uh, completed. In technology, we have wireless upgrades in all of our buildings. Our phone systems have been upgraded. Um, we now have a new policy, uh, BYOD. Um, and that means that students are now allowed to bring your own device to school and to be used in, in instruction and learning. And we have firewalls and protections so that we don't worry about the use. Um, it's very controlled by the teachers, but uh, we have allowed students to bring their uh, devices to school. Um, these tools have opened up um, doors for students that, you know, five years ago we would not have dreamed about. Uh, and we have implemented a new student information system, one that's upgraded. It's called Power School. Uh, we're, we're very pleased. We have it now. The teachers are now um, able to use it. We're just about ready to open up the parent portal. Uh, we'll be opening that up next week so that parents can access information about their students through the parent portal. 
uh, in providing uh, updates to, to classroom assignments and homework, but also to monitor students' uh, grades and work in school. So that, that has been completed. We will continue to work on that because there's so many facets of that particular system. One of the nice parts is, is that it, it transitions very nicely into Winnicunnet High School because they use PowerSchool. So we're working together to ensure that student information is, uh, it gets to Winnicunnet. Uh, communication, I, I mentioned Blackboard Connect. Um, Channel 22, we, we, um, we provided over 200 hours of programming on Channel 22 uh, around school district uh, programs. And that's classroom programs, uh, library programs, concerts, uh, all kinds of uh, special events that occurred in the schools uh, with teachers and s uh, with staff and students. And uh, we were very pleased with the result. We're anxiously awaiting Channel 13. We're waiting for the final cable connections to be made so that, um, that the Hampton School District can use Channel 13 as their main um, portal for uh, videos and, and school events. So we're, we're just waiting for that uh, notification that that project is done. So we expect that within, the, within a few days, actually. Um, over the year for communication, we held a number of forums. Uh, this was opportunities open up to the community, to our parents, grandparents, guardians, whoever, uh, to come and to um, hear uh, reports and information around school safety. Obviously, that's a very important one for us. Uh, we did some uh, information on uh, bullying in the school. Uh, the school board held forums on school calendar to get a sense of what people would like to see in calendars. In our special ed Title I department, we ran parent information nights around childhood anxiety and different ways in which we teach children, kind of involving parents to join us as partners uh, in the education. And we had a great response with parents coming in the evening to these educational sessions. Again, another way for us to communicate about what happens in our district. And I did mention the website, and we, we did upgrade that, and um, we're pretty pleased with that. It's, it, that's going very well. Uh, in terms of human resources and our teachers last year, we, have, we implemented a new teacher supervision and evaluation model um, that was, we worked with teachers, uh, was approved by the school board and um, implemented and, uh, last year, and we had great success with that. We also did an administrator one so that we had two brand new systems uh, for supervision in those two areas. Uh, we did um, a review of staffing needs and you know our enrollment has dipped a little bit as you know um, and so the board has decided that we have to monitor our enrollment and ha make sure that we have the appropriate number of staff uh, to meet our, our student needs and last year we had a reduction of we had a reduction of three <coughs> classroom teachers and some paraprofessionals because of the enrollment dip. Um, our projections uh, stay that, say that we're going to stay steady for a while. We won't see any more decreases in student enrollment, um, but we won't see increases for a while. Um, so we kind of monitor that. We do an update every year on our enrollment projections so that we can stay on top of that and be prepared um, f for, for, the, for the future. We also completed our substitute handbook. I, um, Joan, uh, if you don't mind, Joan was there tonight. Uh, Joan is one of our substitutes, and uh, we had a training. Uh, this is new to the district. We developed a handbook so that when our substitutes come into classrooms, they know what the expectations are, they know the systems that are in place, and they also know the protocols. Uh, so that they're very clear about how to handle situations like fire drills, like evacuations, like lockdowns, and all of the kinds of things that we practice with the kids. Um, and so uh, in, in, in ensuring that all of our substitutes were confident when they walked into the classroom, uh, we provided a training tonight, which was sort of the, 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 the end of the process for us. We will do this annually, though. We would like to bring in our substitutes once a year and review all of those things with them. Joan gave me a little heads up on her way in that things went pretty well. So um, I was there for a few minutes, and then I had to, had to leave. Uh, and we also last year negotiated, uh, successfully negotiated a two-year contract with our Teachers Association. Uh, two years is a short contract, but we also know that the, you know, the economy was in flux. 
And so no one wanted to commit themselves for a long period of time until we got a sense of where um, things were going. So we, we did a two-year contract and uh, successfully completed that, and that was implemented July 1 of this year. Um, around school climate last year, we conducted a three-day safety survey. We hired a company that was made up of um, Navy SEALs. Uh, very, uh, they were awesome. Uh, they came in and they looked at every nook and cranny in our buildings. They spent three days with, and it was great because it was, like one, at one point there was a parent night. There were parents everywhere, so they really got a sense of our building, how they're used, where people are, and then turned around and gave us a number of recommendations for things to work on. And they weren't looking to uh, create a barrier, or they weren't looking to create a, a, a jail-like setting. That was not their intent at all, but to give us uh, good um, recommendations about how we can ensure safety of all of our kids. And a lot of it was around intruder safety unfortunately. I mean, I hate to even talk about it, but it's a reality, and we have to be prepared. And so we have been preparing with our teachers um, uh, so that everyone was um, confident in making decisions in those situations. Great, great process. And then they completed it with a tabletop exercise. We had the fire, the police, the EMTs, uh, Sacred Heart. We had everybody at the table in a tabletop exercise for the whole day run by these, the, the, the guys from, uh, these three guys. And it was uh, excellent. Everybody really got a lot out of it. We had nurses and teachers there so and to be prepared uh, should we ever have to face anything. Uh, we continued, uh, um, let's see, where am I, school climate. Uh, we continued with our um, anti-bully program, Oveus, uh, nationally recognized evidence-based program uh, to, um, to address the issues around bullying. And we continue to do that both at Center and at Marston. And at the middle school, they use a program called PBIS, Positive Behavioral Intervention Strategies, and they continue with that. Uh, last but not least, um, we did, um, in our business area, we did renew our contract with First Student. Um, Nathan did the negotiations. Uh, <coughs> we, um, w we think we did pretty well in terms of uh, our negotiations and keeping that, um, um, that contract um, at a reasonable rate. Uh, we also finished the center school project. Uh, pleased that we finished the center school project on time and under budget. And Nathan will give you a little heads up on that. And during the course of the year, we continued to search for extra money. We, we received money from the McKinney-Vinto, which is the homeless grant. Uh, professional development, that's money that we can use to help with training for teachers. We also are uh, looking at local tuition, um, and um, obviously we access money from the cable franchise fees in order to run the programming for Channel 22. Last but not least, I can't not bring up the awards and recognition uh, <coughs> in the district. I, you know, again, it's a, it's just a, just a wonderful school district. I, I hope you real. I think you know that. I think I've said it. But the accomplishments and the work that's done here with the families and the kids and the teachers is just wonderful. Uh, obviously, um, prefer, you, you know this, that Principal Costa was selected as the Principal of the Year, uh, Elementary Principal of the Year. She will be headed to Washington uh, next week to meet with uh, Secretary Duncan and the President, and they have a big three-day meeting with all the elementary principals of the year, so she'll be representing the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we are awaiting word from Washington. Um, we haven't heard yet, um, but we should know soon. Uh, at this point, Center School has been nominated for a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. Uh, that was nomination came from the New Hampshire Department of Ed based on statistics that they uh, weaned out of all of the information that we send to them, which we have to, around test scores and student performance and uh, so uh, they have been nominated by the state to be uh, a Blue Ribbon School of Excellence uh, and then it goes on to the federal level and the feds have to review all of the documentation and then we're notified. So we're awaiting that notification. Um, two other awards that we received this year. Uh, Marston School was selected uh, by the, in the Commissioner's Circle of Excellence. 
uh, they're uh, considered a reward school and they were considered that for their performance in uh, their assessments. Uh, the kids have done a wonderful job in improving in especially in some of the um, the subgroups you, you've heard me talk about how the test scores are broken up by subgroups but our um, economically disadvantaged subgroup as well as our special ed subgroup have really shown tremendous growth and because of that uh, the commissioner and her staff have selected Marston as a, a reward school in her circle of excellence and the last one was, again, Title I is a, a grant that we get for economically disadvantaged youngsters. And because of the work that was done and the results and the performance of those youngsters in that subgroup, Marston was also selected as a Title I distinguished school. So uh, it was a great <coughs> year, and um, we, look forward to, um, we look forward to continuing this, this work. It, it's been terrific. So I won't say any more. I've uh, bragged enough, and so I'll turn it over to uh, Nathan to uh, update you on finances. It, it certainly helps to hear what we did with the dollars that the taxpayers raised for us. Let's talk about how, ma how many dollars that, that, that added up to and what, what, we, what we had when the dust settled. I'll take you, I guess, maybe to the detail page on page 9, and we can walk through uh, some of the highlights there, and then I'll bring you back to the slides, if you will. The, uh, the punchline is that the operating budget itself carried a surplus at the end of the day of $223,000. Uh, we made a transfer of $17,500 out of that uh, to bring the food service program to, to solvency, uh, as is the statutory responsibility when it can't do so for itself. And, uh, and so that left us with a fund balance of about $205,000. That's not all that's coming back. There's more coming back, to, but that's the general fund operating surplus, if you will. Um, the budget summary is here for you. I would walk you down through a couple of the high points, and I'm focused in this case on, on the far right column of variance, the balance remaining, where you see categorically the, the pluses and the minuses. I tell you that in the area of regular education, we had a kindergarten classroom that we didn't fill, we didn't use. So there was a teaching position we didn't fill, and there was a teacher aid position in that classroom, the kindergarten classroom we didn't fill. The two of those add up to the biggest chunk of the, sa of the savings there in regular ed. Beyond that, though, there were other savings in higher. So you have somebody who retires from you or, or leaves to move to another district and leaves at a, a high step on the scale, costing $60,000, $70,000, whatever it is, and they're replaced by somebody who has maybe less experience, less academic achievement in terms of degrees earned, and uh, still qualified, certified, highly qualified teacher, uh, but you have savings there, and that's where you see savings on the hiring process. Remember that we've still got a veteran staff, better than two-thirds of our staff have, are at the top of the scale, the majority of those have been here 20 plus years, so bringing in somebody that's maybe newer to the profession uh, isn't such a risk when you've got folks that you can surround them with that have got such great skills to share in mentoring and such. In the area of special education, the next line down, you see significant overage. Uh, we, we can boast that we've had no students in out-of-district placements. So understand that the neediest students with some of the most severe challenges uh, uh, and, and educational disabilities end up in many places and in many districts and have here in the past as well ended up in out-of-district placements that can be regionally and or, or further and those can add up significantly in terms of placement costs, transportation costs, some of the consulting services that have to be um, secured when they are away from us and obviously we, as part of the standing law we do everything we can and must to place children in the, in the, in the uh, wow Free and least restrictive environment. I'm sorry, the <laughs> phrase is escaping me. In the least restrictive environment, which really would be in the in the best case, right here in the home district in hometown, we can say that we've done that really well. But in bringing in all of those students and managing to run them in programs here, we had to secure some additional consulting services, some additional specialist services, like uh, services for the blind and the and the hearing impaired, uh, uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, things of that beyond what we had on staff. And so we see those, those overages there, but, uh, but that really was, that, those costs secured us this least restrictive environment and keeping all of our students here in our buildings and our programs. Uh, another big variance uh, that pops out, uh, I'm gonna go to negative variances maybe because that shows something 
meaningful, maybe more meaningful than the positive variances. In buildings, all the way down to 2620 buildings, you see a variance there of about 40,000, 47,000. We did some end of year, made some end of year decisions with the board's support and did uh, security up or safety upgrades to our bleachers at both the Marston School Gymnasium and in the Eastman Gym at the Academy. Railings, treads, some of the underpinnings. Uh, not structurally it's going to fall down, but just uh, lawsuits around the country for the last couple of years say that you really should do it like this now, etc. So we did that. We upgraded our intercoms because we had, through the budget, uh, put new phone systems in now at all three of our schools, tying them all together so that we don't dial an outside number only to dial into the principal who's down the hall or just across the street. Uh, I mean, the old Centrix systems we've had around since, what, the 70s, maybe before, where you could dial direct with a small digit. Now our buildings are actually connected. What we look forward to now is partnering with the rest of the town when we can get there, maybe in a, in a, in a, a solution like a fiber net or something where we can connect uh, m multiple districts, schools, not multiple districts, multiple facilities. Schools moving forward because we need to share data and voice back and forth that way. It'll make a, a lot of sense, I think, to make that uh, community-wide endeavor when we can get there. But uh, we had to upgrade our intercoms because the upgrades to our phones inadvertently left us without an interface. Right now, what can happen and what does happen is at any point in the building, if you were to pick up on the intercom system in a classroom, you can hit an outside phone line. Likewise, we had to interface it so that at any phone you picked up, you can do an all call across the building's intercom to say, we have an issue, everybody get out, what have you. Uh, and so we, we invested in that. And then some of that overage is also about the gas line that we ended up putting in from Hobbs Road at the Marston School out back to where we planted the generator that we had secured over the course of two years with the long-term maintenance warrant article. Uh, ultimately, uh, we had intended to, to tap into the service that came down from uh, High Street to Marston but uh, the costs were, it, were, it was cheaper for us to put in a new service line straight out to Hobbs yeah. than to try to upgrade the pipes that ran all the way over the building. So you see those overages there. The last one is the 13, almost $14,000 in transportation, which uh, is not a regular transportation or a special needs. That's really cost related to McKinney Bento homeless uh, transportation. We've maybe talked about this with the budget committee. We certainly have had a couple of presentations with the board understand that there is a federal law that's called the McKinney-Vento Act that supports the right of students, should they become homeless, uh, to continue to go to school where they originally were at school. Uh, and so a family somewhere in the seacoast who becomes homeless and maybe takes advantage, and now you understand the impact on Hampton, take advantage of a winter rental that is yeah. seasonal and, and, trans and uh, transitional, tra and, and, and find that housing, they're still in, entitled to continue to go to school wherever they started, which might have been Exeter or Epping or Portsmouth, you name it. We share the cost of transporting those students under law with the district they're going back to. But those numbers have been significant for us over the last couple of years. And our budgets are chasing the actuals to try to catch up, but that's where you see the variance. That's a quick uh, quick summary of, uh, of the operating budget. Uh, you look at the, the appropriations at the bottom I mentioned the, the surplus was 223. We transferred to food service. You see just under $30,000 as a surplus from the center school project. When I was with you last fall and we talked, we had already opened for school, so the project was essentially over. This is the fiscal year in which the finances all get uh, captured, even though we broke ground in April of 13. And uh, remember, uh, we went to the ballot, uh, we went to the public hearing with a number that had been offered up to us by the architects of $859,000, which the superintendent and I and Mr. Lassard all felt was was really a number out of the sky. But we went ahead with the board support and we commissioned the, uh, the, the buildable and biddable documents, took it out to bid, received the bid results on the afternoon of the deliberative session, and were able to have the board make a motion to amend that article the night of the deliberative from 859 down to 5886, which was the contract that we signed off on uh, we were able to deliver on that $30,000 lighter than that, which was contingency. The project, in it, it, we carried some contingency because we weren't sure what was underground right. where we were going to put in that addition. Uh, but we managed to, uh, I, I know Mr. Gopalan is uh, no longer on the board and no longer in Hampton, but as a, as a shout out to, to Art for all of his support and, uh, and his concern, he was, I know, pleased that this stayed under budget, but it stayed on scope. And there wasn't any scope creep, uh, and obviously we delivered because we opened the doors for the kids that 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 fall. So that adds another thirty thousand to the bottom line. 
So the, the, the spending side, the appropriation side, carries about $235,000 um, of, uh, of fund balance for you. And if you flip the page to page 10, we can talk about the revenue side. And I've, I've offered some notes to try to draw your attention to the things that are most, most exciting. There's extra here, extra here, extra here, and extra here. <laughs> the single biggest is that we, we, are, we benefit from Medicaid to Schools program and reimbursement from Medicaid for the services and equipment and, uh, provided to some number of our students. Uh, every year we have to be very careful because some of our students are eligible, some are not. Th that eligibility can change, and the way that we fund some of their needs under federal grants, other federal funding, can, uh, can get in the way of that eligibility under Medicare. So we're very Medicaid, excuse me, so we're very careful. In this case, I anticipated 45000 You can see that we actually carried a revenue, uh, a reimbursement there of over $93,000. That's the biggest contributor to what was ultimately a $61,000 variance in revenues. And if you carry all the way down through numbers that are intended to confuse and obfuscate, you can find your way to the bottom and see that uh, the total fund balance uh, that will be stated for tax rate benefit uh, credit to the new tax bill is $296,767. Let me take you back to the slides. This would be a great opportunity for me to just say, over the last three years, the superintendent and I have sat in front of the camera several times. We come and do it here. Normally on a monthly meetings, we're sitting up there and we're a little bit separated. So we're not boxed in quite the way that the camera boxes us in right now. But each year at budget time, we do the little videos uh, promoting the budget, talking about what's on the warrant for the schools, et cetera. And I just took a peek earlier tonight and I, I'm always impressed every time I look that I look like I'm about to walk on for the New York Giants or something. <laughs> and, and she looks like she's about ready to enter preschool when I look at them. <laughs> You don't see it on the camera right now, but every time I turn around and look, I, if, if there's no other motivation to go to the gym, it's sitting here and watching myself on that camera, <laughs> on that screen. I, uh, take, I'm sorry, I digress. Take you back to the slides and tell you that the, the operating savings, I said uh, 205000 from the operating and center schools, 29.9, and the revenues gets us that fund balance. I wanted you to know that federal funds, for us, our, the titled grants, our IDEA, which supports special needs programming, uh, the superintendent has mentioned some of those already, some of the new grants that we received. We actually secured $584,000 worth of federal funding. It's still very small compared to the $19 million budget and, and the almost non-existent state support that you get for education in Hampton. But those are dollars that, that help some of the neediest among our students, some of the uh, some of the most educationally challenged students uh, and really make a great difference in the, in the programming that the school is able to provide. Uh, it's also important to mention to you the Food Service Fund, although it's not intended to be taxpayer funded. Uh, it had revenues of 442000 before its transfer, expenses of 467 so it continues to run in the deficit. We have made some significant changes in staffing to try to reduce labor costs uh, starting for this school year, September 1. Uh, we have uh, eliminated middle management, so we saw the departure of some of our veteran folks who were site managers leading the kitchens in each of the satellite buildings. Our food service director, Mary Borg, is doing her best to be the site leader at all three buildings. Uh, those folks carry the highest rates with some serve, not surcharges, but uh, some, some upcharges in their hourly rate because of the leadership roles that they served or provided. So we made some cuts there. We got skinny in lots of ways in our staffing. Uh, we're doing a lot of multifunction, a lot of... Um, uh, crossover training so that uh, fewer people can continue to do all of the different jobs. Uh, very little specialization going on now. Uh, as long as the dishwashers keep washing their hands before they hit the cash register or the serving line, <laughs> then you know we're doing exactly what we should be doing. And we're really hopeful that we're going to continue to tighten that gap. Uh, there was a 10 cent increase in the price tag on our lunch. Went from $2.50 to $2.60. Uh, that'll generate a little bit of revenue. It wasn't really meant to be a balancing uh, that c c chases f uh, federal mandates and the requirement to continue to keep up with what Uncle Sam is reimbursing for a free meal, for instance, which is greater than the amount that we're charging locally. So there's a statute uh, in place uh, at the federal level that suggests we have to recalculate and, and, and work to keep up uh, to be fair, uh, in this case, to the federal subsidy program that supports the food lunch, the hot lunch program. Uh, and then the last uh, piece that's there is uh, just an update on the Special Education Trust Fund. That's the only trust fund that the school district in Hampton carries. It is held by the trustees of trust funds in the town of Hampton. Uh, and the balance 
that June 30th looked like 213,000 and a little bit. Um, we have, you funded that initially with 50, with 75,000 two more times, and there have been uh, earnings over those, over those last three or four years uh, that adds up to that total as it stands right now. It, in the slides, here's just another graphic. I won't walk through it, but everything that I just got done saying essentially is captured there as well as in the detail sheets so that you'd have that uh, to understand the fiscal picture of what we did with the tax dollar last year in fiscal year 13, 14. Having talked to you about <coughs> what our goals were and what we did to meet that uh, those goals and the dollars that we spent in so doing, we, we wanted to just give you a quick update on the 1415, the goals moving forward and the budget. You want to speak I to think it? that you'll notice that the first um, five goals are very similar to what we have. Um, we're talking about curriculum instruction, we're talking about human capital, communication, governance, finances and facilities updating. But this year the board has determined to add one more and that the board um, is taking this year uh, to look at Hampton Academy. Uh, they have uh, in the in a year ago voted, um, um, the board voted uh, four to one uh, to move forward with with uh, addressing the needs at Hampton Academy and that would be done through a renovation of the current facility uh, that they would stay in town although they have a piece of property as many of you know out on Tom Fra Town Farm Road Toll Farm, uh, Toll Farm, Toll Farm um, that they would stay at the current site uh, that because it's so much a part of the fabric of the community um, and the two elementary schools on both sides of that middle school, the ability for kids to walk uh, in the downtown and, and, and making sure that the downtown is vibrant, a vibrant part of your community, they elected to stay. Um, so we will begin that process of looking at the facility. We've already done the studies. Honest, they don't want to spend any more on studies. They have done studies for studies. <laughs> and I recommended that they just move forward and we will be, they, they are, they're, they're moving forward with that. They have a work session coming up. They'll be looking at it again because it is on the CIP. And uh, they will be moving forward to uh, begin the process of exactly what that, those renovations should look like. They've already determined most of the needs in that building. There's no question. We've done the tours. We've, we've talked to the community. And now it's a matter of de determining what that building should look like 50 years from now. You don't want to do this again. So you, whatever the decisions that are made will really set the stage for the future. So that will be a major initiative this year at, at the school board level. So the operating budget of 1415 started for us July 1st. It was voted in March of 14. Yeah. The operating budget now includes the teacher warrant article that was a two-year deal, a two-year contract that was approved. Operating budget is 19 million six. We again had the $300,000 annual long-term maintenance. Uh, the child benefit services warrant article for Sacred Heart School passed at 42,005, which is roughly $1,000 per student there. So the total operating uh, uh, appropriations for 1415, 19.9, just under $20 million. Uh, I want to bridge that then and talk briefly about 1516. We'll be back. I think we have a date of December 16th. I know today's the 16th, so it might be December 16th. Uh, but we'll be back in December to present to you the operating budget uh, the, uh, as proposed for 1516. You will, as in years past, receive the book. And that book will come in advance of Thanksgiving to give you the three weeks plus or whatever it is to review and prepare. Uh, we, uh, we've set dates to present to the board starting uh, right around the end of October, 1st of November. So they'll have time to review that uh, and pass it forward. We'll go back to the same process that we've done in the past. We, we try very hard to make a clean uh, zero-based budgeting effort where we go back and look line by line. The superintendent and I together, sitting with administrators and the, and the department heads, go through the, pro the budget. Hey, some lines look like last year because they continue to be based upon the same parameters and the same assumptions that are made about what we need, where we're not specifically buying three of these and five of these. But we really try to revisit every one of those. Uh, we compare ourselves to the goals and the objectives that you've seen that we work with uh, the administrators on and share with the board each year to try to let that drive us. Uh, you want to, I don't I, I could just say, um, couple of things that uh, I'm getting ready to pass it because I'm not sure who wants to speak, but two things that we've already identified that I think are going to be important in our budgeting initiative is to talk about securing some human resource assistance in the uh, 
in the business office. We've worked really hard uh, to make sure that the SAU, your withdrawal initiative to leave SAU 21 and secure your own superintendent and business administrator, your own superintendent's office, uh, to become SAU 90, was, I'm sure, for many, a uh, concern. And for many, it boiled down to how can the efficiencies that are derived from a centralization at 21 be anything but, uh, if you shift away from that, how can it be anything but an increase in cost? And so you have to know we carry that as a, as a, well, as a burden, if you want to call it that. As a, uh, I can tell you that the last year that you paid into SU 21 was 1011, and you paid 432,000, and I've now forgotten the, 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 the next three numbers, but it's, it was 432 and change. Uh, this year, even with the benefits in 14-15, we won't spend that much, that much, and that was the 1011 number. And so you can take your own percent and a half, two, three, four percent, whatever metric, and consider where that number would be four years later. Uh, but we've done that because we, we try to keep it skinny, because we work really hard to, to share the duties, and what has happened and continues to happen is that for good and sufficient reason, the local government center takes more money than they need, and then they give it back to us. Somebody's got to do all of the analysis and the spreadsheet work and then all the data entry to make that turn into checks for retirees and actives because we have to give it all back. Uh, Obamacare suggests now that I've got to keep track of, we have to keep track of everybody's time. Even if I know that you're working 40 hours a week or I know you're working 30 hours a week, it's not enough. We've got to collect and manage the data because we've got reporting requirements so that we can prove who should and should not have access to the insurance, have access to the marketplace, for whom we might see a penalty come back when the fines are finally imposed under that, under that uh, enabling law legislation. Uh, it's important to us, it's important to federal and state authorities that we routinely notify folks with universal this and universal that and opportunity this. And By the time you get done and then you add in things like we worked really hard at wellness, trying to bring our health insurance rates down, which by the way fell by 3.5% this year. Uh, in large part, I think, because we work so hard with our wellness committee, with, with pushing teachers and staff to be well. I, I'm not the poster child for that initiative, but we're trying. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, pu pushing it and, it, and it made a difference. But what that takes is it takes somebody who sits and plays the social media game internally, who sends out emails and plays cheerleader and rabble rouses and, and connects and, and plays, uh, um, and plays a um, referral person, you know, I want a case manager for everybody in terms of connecting them to the things that might best ser serve them. That, that's adding up to more hours than we can handle with the staff that we've got. There's so many new rules and expectations and accountabilities that are laid on. So something part-time to assist in that regard. And enrichment is an is a important element throughout the district. Uh, it's something that there's not, uh, there's not a wealth of opportunity for as our budget stands and as our programming uh, is today and we want to explore that and find opportunities to add to the educational experience of all of our students. The drivers that are going to drive our budget as we come back to you 15-16, we just passed a teacher uh, agreement so there's contracted uh, dollars there. We will be coming to you I hope with a newly negotiated agreement with our paraprofessionals union, SESPA, the Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association and so that'll be in a separate Warren article but all other contracted wages will be there. If you haven't yet heard from the town side, you will about police and fire. On the teacher side and the employee side, the New Hampshire Retirement dealt us a 6.6% increase to teacher contributions and a 3.7% to uh, employee contributions that we'll make to the New Hampshire Retirement System. I, I can tell you out of the box, that's at least $130,000 as I ran the numbers on today's salaries for today's staff. So as we look to 15, 16, it's going to be at least 130 of new money that we chase there before we see contracted increases. Beyond that, you know, the superintendent already made a, su a suggestion that enrollment has taken a dip. We continue to monitor. She mentioned that in this budget, center school went from eight classrooms to seven at every grade level, K1 and 2, so there were three teaching positions uh, that, we, that we eliminated as we budgeted. Those are hard decisions to make. We do everything we can to see those happen by attrition so that folks that are retiring aren't replaced as opposed to staff that are interested in gainful employment uh, having, to, having to move on. We've been really successful at keeping everybody in-house who's here. So, but we have to continue to look and be aware of what our enrollment does. We'll use NESDEC, the, uh, the educational group out of uh, blah, 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 Mass. I forget where it is. Um, Northern Mass, just across the border, Lexington maybe. But anyway, they do, they do enrollment projections for us as a part of our membership with them every year. Uh, and so we'll have that as a part of our budgeting package. And 
and, and we have to keep paying attention because a lot of the services that we talked about that come to us by Title I and II and IDEA standards are really important to our students. And as those entitlements are at risk each year, we try to monitor the impacts that that might have. So that's our plan for 15-16. And we'll be back in December with that. The superintendent would, would say it if I gave her 30 more seconds to talk, but <laughs> don't ever hesitate to be, to be among us. You know, we, our office is in the, the old, in one of the wings of Marston, the one closest to the parking lot. Uh, you can park near it, uh, and uh, if you're lucky, and, um, <laughs> and knock on the door and come on and see us. Because if you have questions, the easiest way is to sit down face to face and make sure that some of the stuff that we try to make, I try to make as simple as I can, for you know, for generic consumption on the camera, etc. Certainly could do, could use some more discussion at times. Don't hesitate to come ask for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very, very good report. I think every year it gets a little bit better. It's very clear, which is something we don't see too often, um, where the money went and what you were able to do with what you had. I'm going to go around the table. I'm going to ask everybody that we go around from one round any questions that you have. Um, if you're not ready with the question and want to go towards the end, that's fine. But again, just one time, there are a lot of us. I'm going to start on this side with you, Joe. Nope, it's uh, it spelled out. It's a good job. Thank you. Just the same as every other year, you kept right on top of it from day one, right to, right to <coughs> that. Great job. I have nothing right now, thank you. Good evening. Sir, how are you? In the area of technology, uh, I read recently, probably last month, about a small town in Massachusetts where the curriculum was so technology driven, computers and laptops or whatever, that there were some students who could not afford to buy a laptop to bring to school. But because the school was so adamant about this curriculum, that it went to court. And I think the final outcome was that the town had to pay to get, you know, so that everybody had an equal education, that the town had to pay uh, to buy equipment for those students who could not afford to buy it. Have you heard anything about that, or would you like to comment on that? Well, the only You're just saying here about developing a, a, a bring-your-own-device. Well, what if a student cannot afford to bring his own device, and he goes into that classroom, and everybody else has a computer or a laptop, right. they're stuck. Well, well, you know that this district has made a significant commitment to technology, um, that in our buildings now we have portable, um, we have um, laptops, uh, we have desktops in the classroom, and we also have the iPad, mobile iPad labs. Um, so there's plenty of access for students. Um, but we also knew that we needed to continue that, to have a tool in the youngsters' hands that allowed them in every class to use that. And um, so the district has gone ahead um, with a one-to-one -one initiative. And we just uh, purchased 600 uh, Chromebooks. 300. I'm sorry, 300. Okay. All right, so I wanted 600. <laughs> um, 300, thank you. 300, um, uh, which would be 150 at third grade, which they will keep third, fourth, and fifth grade. That will be their uh, handheld uh, Chromebook for the three years that they're at Marston. At Hampton Academy, we also bought one for every sixth grader um, at Hampton Academy, which they will keep for their um, three years at Hampton Academy. Again, a nice transition because Winnicunnet is doing the same thing, and they have a one-to-one -one initiative. So um, we are working on having that, that tool in the youngsters' hands. You know, one would question, well, you, that kind of expenditure and what's wrong with pencil and paper. You know, we hear that, but the issue is what are the technological challenges that our youngsters are going to face in the world of work and the world of learning. And so we are, in fact, uh, uh, supporting that uh, and uh, has been well received. Right now, we ha the kids have not received their uh, Chromebooks yet. We're working with the staff and doing training and preparing for that. We're waiting for actually for the, for the uh, delivery. 
So you have met that challenge. We have met that challenge. And that classroom, uh, right. Everybody will have right. access to the right. same because level he, of equipment. And right. Great. You, you don't want to be. Well, I didn't want to. I, I saw what happened in that other town. I said, whoa. You know, and imagine how that would fracture a community yeah, by yeah. separating youngsters out. We make That's we work I very court. hard. That's right. We work very hard to bring equity to all of our children in the classrooms. Thank you. I, hey, I, if I can just build on, I just yeah. want to say it's a great question, and I want to make sure as people here, 300 Chromebooks and a one-to-one -one initiative. Google's done a really great job, and many of the manufacturers out there in the industry have followed, uh, working hard to try to bring a price point in that made sense for public school districts. I mean, we talked for the last three years that we've been here about the technology. We talked about computers. There was a day when you, when you were buying desktops and getting them under a thousand dollars, and that was exciting. Not yesterday, or even in the last three years, but in this, in in my dozen years doing this, let's say, a thousand dollar getting under a thousand bucks was where you went with a desktop, and those laptops were real expensive because they'd be twelve, fourteen hundred dollars, uh, and. We had come to a point where we had set ourselves with an inventory turn expectation where we were looking at six and eight hundred dollars as price points for the tools that we were purchasing. When we managed to buy Chromebooks for less than three hundred thousand, three hundred bucks a piece, right? You go to the market, you get them at, at uh, your, your um, Best Buy, et cetera, your uh, Circuit City doesn't exist anymore, but you go there and get those at two ninety nine, three hundred dollars. That's really the intended price point. We came in a little under that, 260 and change, uh, but then we managed some financing that we secured a negative interest rate on because we were able to identify or gain commitment on what the residual value will be at the end of three years. They gave us credit for that. They'll take that back at three years so that we won't risk what a child is going to do to those things in the next three years, carrying it around, and then have 300 of them stacked up in my office trying to figure out who I was going to pay to salvage them or to take them. Because we've done a great, uh, we've done some great work in the last couple of years, getting rid of big monitors and desktops and such that cost us money per unit, because of what's inside them that needs to be disposed of properly. So, again, we've done everything we can to try to launch this initiative, only because we were able to see a price point that came in well under 300 bucks a piece. That way, we're looking at that investment being good for three years of a child's experience, uh, and and done it at a negative interest rate. So, doing everything we can to try to to try to move forward like this, but do so without wasting or squandering. That's with the software, the software loaded, right? Yeah, that's with the, that's all the software. You don't have there's no because it's the Google and the Google universe, and it really runs on Chrome, which is a browser more than anything, like your Internet Explorer or your Mozilla Firefox. The interface is a little different. The ultimate functionality is the same, uh, but there's no Microsoft licensing, which has really become a, the bane of this kind of initiative, because every time you have to kick out for kick out for you know the uh, the uh, the operating system itself windows and then for word and excel and the slideshow the kids are going to do and pretty quick you've you've doubled the cost of your unit so uh, this is a it's a great thing the market has brought to us and we're hopeful that it will be of great success in the classroom so thank you i have a two part question one is a follow up on the technology you're absolutely right you don't go toward technology these kids are not going to make it but some of the states are now grappling with privacy issues surrounding what data is being accumulated by the use of this technology and who has access to that data. And they cited an example going forward with some college administrator could theoretic admitting office person could theoretically be able to see the results of some kids work in grammar school because it would be collected. So I don't know how, how far along you are on this. I think California is the most advanced state. They're pretty much reigning it all in terms of sharing. And, and well, why don't you answer that, then I'll ask my other part. Well, well, you know, our kids have electronic portfolios right now. They have samples of their, hint, their, their written work and uh, projects that they've done, and they've created a portfolio. That portfolio is then moved on to the high school, and so that, you know, the, that we can monitor. It really measures growth, doesn't it? It shows how the kids advance from year to year. But you're right. It does have to be monitored very carefully and who has access to that and how that access occurs. Um, again, we have very tight firewalls with very tight restrictions about who has access to that data. Even our new student information system only has uh, maybe six or eight administrators who can get into that data and, and be able to, um, 
to <coughs> monitor it. So uh, we also, um, I have to say, the state of New Hampshire has some very um, tight um, rules and regulations, RSAs, uh, relative to confidentiality around students. And they have been adamant about that, even with our national testing that's coming on. And, and so we've had to make sure that the data that is allowed is data that is um, only will be seen by certain eyes and that data that doesn't affect the, the whole child. The we other have work to do on that. That's still going to be interesting. Monday, the New York Times mentioned New Hampshire, among other states, which had been addressing the problem. What they were saying was, was something that would explode as the technology exploded. Mm -hmm. My other question concerns teacher assessment. Some areas of the country now approach it as a three-pronged process. One, the test results from the students. Two, observation by administration as supervisors of the teachers teaching. And some communities are now saying that actually there should be a third component. The students should, in a sense, evaluate the teacher. I was just curious where you would be at with that idea. Um, our teacher um, system is based on um, f f five tenets. The first one is um, that the teachers all set goals, and those are done with, this, with the principal, just like we do, just the same model all the way through. Um, then we have what we call walkthroughs. So every teacher has at least three walkthroughs. That's a session of 10 or 15 minutes visiting the class, sitting, watching the lesson, and giving immediate feedback to the teacher. Then the teachers have a formal observation where it's a real set kind of a, an observation. They know when the principal's coming in. So that's part of their two teacher supervision. We also, when we sit down and do a summative at the end of the year um, with our teachers, included in that is a discussion around student performance. And so that is part of the, um, the teacher effectiveness plan in Hampton where we use student data over time now. We don't just do one shot. You know, a kid, a youngster takes one test and then all of a sudden we're rating a teacher. That is not the case in Hampton, but more about multiple um, f uh, data points mm -hmm. with different tests that we use. Teacher brings all of the data in. Principal has access also. And they have a discussion around student performance and so that's part of their evaluation. The last piece is surveying. And, and we haven't mandated surveying, but we have teachers that are now using surveys. And so they're doing surveys with their parents and or students, but we haven't made it um, mandatory across the district. We'd like to get there, but that's, that, that, that comes with time, and we're working on that. The other piece that we have in our evaluation is peer. We feel that we have some outstanding teachers. So we take our outstanding master teachers, and they go into classrooms of the teachers maybe newer. And they sit in, and they have a collegial kind of a relationship where they provide feedback to each other. And I think that's an effective way from, for, for, for where it's not, because sometimes the teacher feels it's punitive, or you know, they're watching me. That, 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 that's not what this is about. Um, and so they, 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 they share each other's observations, and um, I think the peer observations are a good tool. The, the, the teachers were very clear when we did this. This is about improvement. This is about helping teachers to become better teachers. This is about te giving teachers ways and skills in which they can perform even at a higher level. When we looked at our teachers, because they're all given a, a terminology of highly effective, effective, um, uh, developing and needs improvement. He's better with it than I am. Um, and, and um, you know, our teachers really rank in the effective and highly effective area. I mean, they're very skilled. And, um, and so after a year, we've only got a year's worth of data, but um, uh, we monitor that. So a lot of um, <clears throat> angst over the teacher evaluation systems across the country. Yeah, I'm glad to see you kind of getting into the student being a part of that mm -hmm. process. They're our consumer, you know. Exactly. You know, most of them are saying the same thing. You've got to listen. You've got to listen because I don't, you know, the, sure there's maybe a student who is having a bad day or um, was upset that the teacher maybe didn't do something the way they thought it should be done and might, might give a grade on a teacher that's different. But for the most part, they give you a very honest um, uh, evaluation and feedback. Great. Thank you. What an exciting time to be a student. Yeah. <laughs>
honest to God, every time you give your presentation, thank you very much. Very thorough, Thanks. very educating. Thank you. We are very blessed with some wonderful educators, and we are surrounded, Nathan and I are You're surrounded here. with, uh, with um, wonderful educators and who have taken up the challenge. You know, sometimes they might be a little reticent, you know, but in, honest, in this district, uh, they take the challenge up. And um, I'm not saying they rubber stamp everything we do either. I'm not saying that. I don't want you to think that because they'll challenge us. But they themselves take up the challenge to say, what can we do for our kids and, and, and how can we improve? And uh, you, can't, you can't ask for anything more in this kind of business because, as you know, they're faced with a lot, of in a lot of challenges. We're blessed in this town. Yes, you are. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, again, thank you for coming. And um, you had mentioned that you're looking at student populations, and that's helping you decide how to staff with your teachers. And I applaud you on your decision to go with attrition whenever possible to make it as painless as possible for the teachers. I was just curious, do we have a student to teacher ratio that you use to decide how many classrooms we should have? It, we do. We have school board policy, actually, on how many students are allowed in a classroom. And um, in, in grades 3 to 8, it's um, 25. And below, um, the, in the primary schools, it's 20. And that pretty much is in line with the state. The state does um, 30 for grades middle school and up in high school. Um, but the, the, the class sizes in Hampton are, are, are a bit lower than the state requirement. Thank you. Going back to the numbers, I know you said it. Nathan, but to have you go back over the general fund balance of $296,767, you could just make very clear to everybody because how you deal with your money at the end of the year is different than the municipal budget deals with it. And if you would, once again, let us and everybody watching know where that money goes and when it goes there. Absolutely. So. If I, without making the answer too long, I would simply say we have a voter approved appropriation, which is at the polls that we do in March. That's the rock bottom number, the solid number of for spending. The tax rate raises the dollars that are included in that uh, number, but we offset that with federal grants that come in, with uh, state building aid that we still get on old projects. Uh, Medicaid reimbursement I talked about and the like. So after we net out all of the dollars that that we anticipate receiving from other sources, the remainder we raise each year in taxes, the town raises, and through our joint treasurer you met with tonight, we see those dollars come to us. We, uh, we carry ourselves with all diligence through the course of the year. At the end of the year for us, which is June 30th, we actually compare ourselves to our appropriations to make sure we haven't overspent the bottom line, but then we take, like like you would maybe in a business, I've done it here in, in components, but we essentially take the total money we raise minus the money that we spend, and whatever is left is returned to the town, he says with parentheses around it. It's returned to the town as a credit against next year's bill. Some years back in a different district, I had somebody call up and say, I heard you say on television that the money's going back to taxpayers. So I was wondering when I'm getting my check. <laughs> yeah. We don't actually cut a check, and the dollars don't actually leave the school district's account and go back to the town's account. But when we, when we consider another total money appropriation voted at the, tax, at, the, uh, at the ballot, and we consider those revenues that we're going to raise, we essentially see this as an offsetting revenue. Hey, before we raise any more taxes, you already got that money. Mm -hmm. You don't get to use it anymore for the purposes of last year. Now it's an offset against what we'll send you this year. So every year it reduces, to the extent that it exists, it reduces the new tax bill. And so last year, the fund balance that we returned was $136,049. This year, it's again, as we said, $296,767. Some things happened this year that, that allowed us to generate uh, a greater surplus, but also some additional revenues. So we do everything we can to, we talked about the MS4 on the town side, ours is a 24. We try to cook into that thing everything we know that we might be able to raise uh, without being irresponsible, because that 
again helps to reduce the tax rate. But what you asked is the fund balance of 296,000. That goes back as a credit against against the next year. We can't stash it. We can't put it in the bank. We'd, the town can keep a rolling surplus. Uh, the schools don't have that same luxury. There's some new legislation that allows us to keep a, so a fraction, but we haven't we haven't voted to enable that in Hampton. So as it stands, anything left over at the end of the day gets returned to offset taxes. Thank you for have making that, that clear yeah. for everyone. Mm -hmm. Frank? Hi, thank you. How are you, sir? <laughs> um, Richard took my initial question, and um, thank you for that. Um, my next question, I guess, is um, the food service. Yeah. What is really 10 cents going to bring down the 17,000 we had to put in this year? Again, the 10 cents wasn't an increase that we thought. If I took the 17.5 and I divided it out by the number of meals and raised the rate, it would have been more than that. Because as I remember, I said that the 10 cents might, uh, 7,000, yeah, it might raise us an extra 7,000 if the same number of meals were served. but. We didn't raise the 10 cents because we were trying to chase the 17.5 of shortfall. Uncle Sam's reimbursing us at a rate right now of about two dollars and seventy-two, sixty. The base is two sixty-seven, maybe. Sixty-seven. Two sixty-seven per per meal. If you are qualified for free lunch based on your income level, Uncle Sam really wants us to be asking everybody else to raise the same amount of money to pay for a meal, and and so they have established some regulations that direct that in every district nationwide that's participating in the USDA program, you have to run your numbers through this formula and it kicks out and says, you have to raise it at least this much. There's no expectation that you raise it more than 10 cents in a year. So in this case, when we went back and we went through the formula, uh, there are hold harmless, there are transitional, there's all kinds of phrases, just like you have an adequate education, you know, there's, you know, those different funding mechanisms. In this case, the formula prescribed or directed that we had to go up by a dime. So we really want to chase, we already raised the rates from two and a quarter to 250 two years, two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were hesitant to do anything more than what the law demanded. We really trying to find the savings to balance on the spending side, not the revenue side. It's absolutely ridiculous that we should have to raise it at all, but that's the government, the way right. it works today. Um, with the, um, new computers and what have you are we giving them to the children to take home are they allowed to go home with them the the new one on one the go, the chromebooks yes um uh, well the third grade teachers have uh, are a little um uh cautious about the third grade is taking them home yet. This is a brand new experience for them, right? So um, as in true style of an elementary school, you know, they're very protective of their, their, their young chicks, right? And so they're not going to go home right away. They, they're not, just not sure about them. But the sixth grade, once they get accustomed to using it, yes, they will. They'll have that opportunity to take well, them home. Well, my question goes back to replacing now. What's it going to cost to replace? You know, I drop my... Right. Mine on the floor. We are going to get good um, coverage to them, They're, they're you know, the, the, the pad that you put them in. So we do know that. Um, we also have some, some um, uh, extra ones in case we do have some damage. Um, but um, Nathan um, and uh, Greg Lamparis, our tech director, made the decision not to go out and insure them because the insurance costs were greater than the costs for, what, five, six, seven, uh, yeah, that was losing nice. them, Where are we right? getting to? Our, our number was, we bought 300 for these two grades. The cost to insure them over three years, for the same money I could buy another 100. So I could buy a third more than I needed. <laughs> yeah. I, talked to, I talked to two other districts in the state that had done similar initiatives. In both cases, they had elementary, first grade through one through five and one through eight. And they gave them to everybody all in one fell swoop, and they let them take them home. And they were talking about loss rates in the 18% range. So 18% on 300 put me in the you know, 50 some odd units. We bought 24 extras. We're going to spend the additional dollars on casing them for safety. But the idea that I could that I could buy a hundred, I'm not going to have a loss rate of 33 percent. If I do, we might have an issue that we don't want to yeah. continue working with because <laughs> these things are supposed to be they're 11 inch, they're 11 inch units. You can see them at you know, like I said, Best Buy. There's five or six different brand names there, but um, they're intended to be fairly durable. Obviously, a drop from four feet onto the edge could be could be dangerous. Yeah. But 
I mean, this guy, this guy's been off the edge of the table here in this room twice that I can think of, a few <laughs> times at home. So it's um, and this thing's eight years old, or seven years Usually old. Usually, right after I test anyone email. That's right. <laughs> so it's you know, we're hoping that our loss rate is pretty low and that our balance of 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 um, discretion is is and it will be rewarded. But I'm hoping, you know, with the third graders kind of taking it easy and keeping it in the building, and the sixth graders taking it home when. My biggest concern is not even the kids taking it home. My concern is at the middle school level, walking them from classroom to classroom to classroom, mm. where the kids are distracted and they've got other things going, they've got textbooks and backpacks and friends and cell phones and things like that that you know, kind of come and go. And have to, that's when I'm afraid things are going to fall in the hallways. I could just walk through every day and pick up two or three of them. But that's not going to happen. I know that the folks at the staff at the academy are going to work really hard. So. I, I, I just saw that as a, a possible it budget could be. complication later on if we... You know, oh, we're certainly buying. We have to replace thirty mm. percent of them, mm. or whatever. It's, we'll have to think twice about this whole thing. So, or, or maybe the you know the, the insurance will be you know more reasonable and more justified in that case. But for right now, we're we're heading the other direction. I have a couple other questions, but I'll send you an email. Okay, Thank you. Sir. My pleasure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, great leadership. Great presentation as usual. Uh, I think you and. Uh, superintendent and even the school committee is providing great leadership to a uh, school system in Hampton. I suspect the parents are doing likewise and uh, part, of the, part, of the, part of the quality of leadership is that your uh, customers are well engaged and, uh, and I see that. I do watch your, your, your meetings uh, and they get replayed and often I find myself watching them multiple times. So. <laughs> uh, I did, I did want to note that uh, I've heard a lot of comments about uh, federal mandates and federal strings and so forth. And I noticed in your presentation that uh, the total federal funds that we're receiving is less than one half of one percent of our budget. Yeah. Which begs the question in my mind, why don't we just cut them out? We don't, I mean, one half of one percent, less than half of a percent is virtually nothing, isn't it? And if we're having all this problem with all these strings they're putting on us, perhaps we should give some consideration of just cutting them out entirely. Since we're doing a good job, we don't need their advice, we don't need their strings, etc. You don't need to answer that. I just wanted to throw that out there. We'll try Thank to you, Madam Chair. Michael? I uh, have a couple of questions. I actually had three, but you took care of one of them. Uh, back to the lunch program. Uh, you, you said you ran short just a few dollars there. Do, do the free lunches you said that the <coughs> government reimburses you two sixty seven or something like that per lunch? So that means technically we're not losing any money through the free lunch program or aspect of the situation. So we're not have to make up the rest of us don't have to make up for that's what I'm trying to say. The government's taking care of that part. So basically anybody who gets free or reduced lunch is the school's getting reimbursed adequately for all that, is that correct? I, I I understand I understand what you're asking or how you're how you're thinking it. I think if you take a step back, what we're chasing is if if 267 mm -hmm. and and if everybody even today if everybody paid 267, both the those for whom the federal government pays and those who bought locally mm -hmm. would still be in the deficit. Mm -hmm. Which, which makes the which makes the case that even the 267 isn't covering the cost, mm -hmm. which is why our concerns are not on the revenue side; they're on the spending side. We've got to curtail the cost of food and materials that go into the meals, and the cost of labor that it takes to serve the meals and, and make the program run. Because right now, clearly, our unit cost per meal served is greater than 267, no matter who's paying for it. We're spending more like. 285 or 290 to make every meal happen okay. between people and overhead and 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 food and paper towels and cleaning supplies you name it okay. we're spending more per meal than we're taking in and that's why we're trying to curtail costs. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, one more we question. face the same, Michael. Just a comment. We face the same um, issues that you face when you go to the grocery store. I went to the grocery store on Friday and I was a little surprised by the bill. And she, Mary Borg faces those same high costs for food, the transportation of that food. Yeah. We use government co commodities. We, we do very well with that. She, she integrates that into the meal. But because of 
you know, the, the work towards a good nutritional meal um, that meets all of the, the standards for that meal, um, it does, in, it does impact, in fact impact the lunches. Uh, we also know that during the downturn in the economy um, that there are many people were bagging lunches from home. Uh, and so one of the things that Mary's doing is trying to incentivize, get the kids encouraged and get them back into the lunch lines and buying the lunch too. So we're, we, we, we haven't seen that, that uptick yet, um, but she continues to work on that. So there are other things that we can do to try to make this food service program solvent. It has been an issue since we arrived and we still haven't solved it yet. Well, I know when I was in school 100 years ago, <laughs> that school actually made money on the milk. The reimbursement was more than what the town actually spent at the milk. We also got tons of turkey, tons of ham, and peanut butter. There were peanut butter jars on every table, whether you wanted or not, it was there. Because it was actually a commodity. It like is, you say. the commodities, everything I mean, there you are mentioned. some things right. out there, but I imagine the killer is probably the fresh produce and probably. But I, I have one more question for you. You said something about Channel 13 coming alive soon. Really? You have some kind of a crystal ball that I, nobody else had? Um, I did uh, discuss the matter with uh, the community liaison from Comcast. I've also had uh, conversations with Brian and Paul, and we were given a date of September 15th. Really? Um, which happens to be yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did meet with our uh, media, uh, John Judson, and mm -hmm. I met this morning uh, because John really is the go-to guy. He's mm -hmm. working with the advisory committee and he does all of our media stuff for us and uh, there's been no movement so uh, we, 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 we just we know that the selectmen are looking at this I know they've been frustrated at least that's what I'm getting reports and mm -hmm. Rusty has been keeping us up to date on the board so I mean we're just waiting because we have plans to launch this and we just haven't been able to do it. I know that we were told that it's going to happen about a year ago. Well, well it was last. supposed to be done by December and yeah. we are now um, into September and it's not done and I'm I know they've had some changes in staff and they had some issues but wow. Mm. They tell uh, the meeting today on Channel 13. What? They televised their meeting today. Yeah, they did from um, the two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I think they can do the f the feeds that are that are uh, are recorded. Um, mm. I'll have to look at that. Stay tuned. We'll stay tuned. <laughs> We're working on it, Michael. I'm all done. Yes, thank you. Thank yep. you. Good presentation. And I know from having uh, three grandchildren, one in each school last year, that the schools are extremely positive. And being educated myself for 36 years. That, that you run a real good, real good show, and the, and the teachers in, in Hampton are, are super. I just a couple of questions. One on the privacy, which I'm sure you're doing. I'm, I'm sure you got to stay on top of that because yeah. in the Google environment, I mean, when you have all major corporations and major banks being hacked, and right. you know, even the Pentagon being hacked, I mean, nothing is is totally no data is totally right. uh, safe. And the other thing is, uh, I know some schools I read last year during snow days with technology. We're using sending home uh, bags or uh, assignments so yep. that they could count it as a school day, and then you'd save on transportation costs when it came around to making up that day. Do you know if that was successful with any schools, or whether that was a failure, if that's anything that's worth? It depended on who you can talk, who you yeah. talk to. Um, in some places, Kiasage, which really was the one that started it under Jerry Frew. Um, ver was successful I and mean, he doesn't use them all the time he actually calls a blizzard bag day and you hear the announcements from Kearsage he'll say that the announcement will say this is a blizzard bag day and yet you talk to other parents uh, we talked to some folks in Hampstead because we have had that on our agenda yep. to look mm -hmm. at um, and uh, m m m mom of four kids comes home from work guess what she's got <laughs> she's got work <laughs> and one computer and so there, there's, there's the ups and downs. Um, some teachers suggest that it isn't rigor eno rigorous enough. Um, and in the, with the little ones, it would be more paper. And then what does that mean? Uh, Ten worksheets? And, t and that's not as productive as having that teacher there with them doing activities and hands-on. So 
it's a, it's a blizzard bag with a mixed bag of results. And so we looked at it twice now, and we backed away both times, Jim. We do. I mean, we get excited because you start talking about the cable, the cable content that you could have stacked up and ready to go. And if you have six hours of a seven hours of a school day, and the local cable could be broadcasting age-appropriate programming at different times during the day that could dovetail. So you actually had the teacher almost present, uh, you know, coming across the cable line, or blended online so that folks have got access to, you know, the, the flipped classroom kind of environment. There's some th opportunities that continue to present themselves out there, but bringing them all to, to bear on the conversation at the same time, it hasn't happened yet. Okay. Any more the question? Um, what's our per pupil cost, and how does that compare to per pupil cost in New Hampshire and national? Our pu per, uh, the, the last one that I've got stated was uh, last year, and we used that for tuition rates, et cetera, it's 13704 uh, Remember, that's the black box formula coming out of the Department of Ed, which takes out some of the transportation variables and capital costs so that we can have that apples to apples comparison around the state. Uh, it's obviously higher than that if you do joke you public raw costs, you just take the total budget divided by the number of kids, it'd be higher, for sure. But um, that 13 is our K-8 average, and I want to say the state average is right about that, mm -hmm. and I, co mm -hmm. I couldn't comment on a national. Okay. Uh, for that same year, we were, I want to say we were just below the state average when we compared it last and looked at that number, which was for 12-13 is the number that I'm quoting off the top of my head. So. Okay, thank you. I have no questions. I'm an active participator. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on SCU 90 and I'm, I'm interactive and I'm a very active participator. Here, here. And uh, certainly not a passive one. Thank you. Quick. Uh, how do you design a test that they can't get ask Google to give them the answer? If you're doing if you're doing it at home on a, on a snow day, for instance. Mm -hmm. You're asking about the test. Yeah. I, I mean, well. Some things aren't going to step forward in technology quite as quickly. You probably have to close the lid before oh, okay. we take the I test. So. <laughs> oh, okay. The other thing is, uh, books don't have lids. Who, when they crash, who fixes them? You? Yeah, this is, I mean, let me say, here's how, here's how the, Chrome, um, here, the Chromebook is like a textbook, is like anything else that's in the classroom. If I need it to, uh, to deliver effectively instruction on a day-by-day -day basis, I'm going to provide it for the student. And if there's something wrong with it, if it doesn't meet the expectation, it doesn't serve the purpose, I've got to take care of it. So if, if they are broken, if there's a problem, that'll be on us. Yeah. The other thing I was wondering is uh, yeah, maybe you should give adult education to teach us how to use these things. Well, we have an experiment going on right now. One of our board members is getting his um, board packet via his own um, uh, computer. He has a handheld. So um, we got, we, we did okay the first meeting. So um, Rusty is uh, sort of our experiment and uh, see how he does. And uh, because we'd like to at some point go paperless with our school board. I mean, I give them a packet of paper that's this thick and I would much rather them have a tool that they can use, and they all have computers and handhelds, so we could do that. So we're working on it. My last question is, how do you control what they look at on the computer? Because there's all kinds of opportunities. Oh, oh there sure and is. And word gets around pretty fast. Right, and they're quick, and they are very quick, and they're very astute on I'm these sure computers. They are. And, and we, have, we have firewalls uh, that prevent them from going outside yeah. of um, outside of the those um, places that they're allowed. Yeah, that'd be an issue that the parents would. Be yeah, parents about. need to really boy. That's a good Pete. That's a great comment, um, be, Sonny, because parents have to be vigilant. They have to know what their kids are doing. They can't just say, "Go to your room and work on your computer." The computer should be done in the place in the home that's very visible, that's very active, that has a lot of eyes and ears. And it isn't just the places that they go and the programs, but also some of the text messages that are going on that, that are not appropriate. Uh, parents need to be very engaged in that and not to be afraid to say something, you know, like that's not, that's not acceptable. And uh, we do, um, we've, been, we've done some nights with parents to help them understand those kinds of things that can happen 
um, with technology. Good point. Good point. I want you to know and the people that are listening at home, uh, there's management software, Google management software that's running on all of these Chromebooks that are purchased by the district. Uh, I went out and bought a Chromebook for child one and child two, my twin daughters, as they went into middle school this year. Uh, on its own, the, the Google Chrome environment does not provide the same kind of parental controls that you'd like to have. But in our educational environment with the management overlays that we've got, they're much better. So the Chromebooks that these kids will be using with all of the limitations and the, and the filters and such that, that are in place will, will protect and have to because we have to comply with SIPA, the Child Internet Protection Act, mm -hmm. as a part of what we do. But if you happen to go out and buy, a, buy you one of your own, you'll find that, like I found, that I have to do a whole lot of vigilant oversight because they're smarter than you think they are. And, uh, and Google is still warming up to the challenge of providing me the kind of permissions, rights, and controls that I want to keep them on task and on target. So, Actually, the kids will figure out how to get over. Oh, they're smart. Anyways. They're smart kids. They're smart. Well, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for all the good questions going around the room. And we know the day starts really early for both of you. So again, this year, we want to thank you wholeheartedly thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Giving us a wonderful presentation. I want to remind you that we will next be together December 16th. Yes. Um, for your budget review. Uh, this year, we'll do the Warren articles separate, unless you only have one or two. Uh, but as we get further into the budget season, that will be the tell-all which way it's going. But for now, December 16th, and again, uh, Superintendent Murphy, uh, Mr. Lenny, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to do um, a 10-minute break. Stretch your legs. Yeah. Never work anymore. Let's go. Gladly go. That's where they want to go. His seat will go back and go All right. Welcome back, everyone. Our break is over, and we're back on course with business. I'm going to go to the next line here and do the reports from our representatives. Jim, if we could start with you with the selection. Budget, we're, you know, working on it. We will have it ready in time for the, you know, the timeline. Mm -hmm. um, I am attending the NHMA conference on the 26th as mm -hmm. a representative for the selectmen. Good. And, uh, Perfect. you know, if you have anything that, that you think I should look at, if you email me or something, you know, you can get the policies that they're going to talk about online. And if you have anything you think is pertinent. Are you bringing anything up there from We can't. Us? We were too late on that. We were too late? Yep. That's the deadline, right? Yep. Yeah. The deadline was beginning of, around the beginning of September, maybe even the end of August. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was sort of Yeah. Uh, you know, could next year you guys work it into the calendar? Yeah. Your calendar to, yep. to have a deadline? I, after the discussion with NHMA, I really felt that was an opportunity missed by us. Yeah. In, in years in the past and open to us. We always go, why does that stuff take precedent over our stuff? Well, there was the answer is that. Yeah. And, and if we're going to be a member, we might as well, you know, that, yeah. you know that, that's the point I made at this elections meeting, that if we're going to be a member, let's do it. Elsewise, let's get out. One or the other. One or the other. As but they let's said. not pay dues and not take advantage. Now, another question I have for you on that, and I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys have questions, but it, well, you're on an HMA. Are we going to use, or is the board going to use the ability to bring them in for any seminar because we're over that $15,000 threshold and they can bring one to us? You know, we haven't, we haven't, we have, we have no plans right now, but I will bring it up if, if there's something, you know. Because if not, I can think of a, a piece that I'll discuss under new business. Okay. That we, I think would be good if we could get them to do it. We, we're late in the year. They're busy themselves. Um, but I would like to, I'd like to be able to use that somewhere this year. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. And one more thing, budget books. <coughs> I know things have been 
going slowly, a little, a little slower. I mean, it's a big job for Christy to take on and, and do all this work, and um, Mike could do it so well. The budget books in some years came out while the, we, we got them while the ink was still wet. It does help us to have them at least a week, if not 10 days before our, our, um, what, the rounds we start with budget. Okay, so right now the date that they have is October 17th. You'll have it? October 17th will work. That, that's the date. That, they, that they're going to have the books. That, 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 that is posted, yes. That's early. That's, that's what... It, that's very early. Well, I, I didn't bring that paper with me. No, it, it, it is and it isn't because our next meeting is October 21st. Yeah. So every, if we can have the books at least by the 21st, because we're starting our, our budget rounds on the 30th. So while it seems early, it's not. Yeah, what I'm, I'm driving at, though, is that I don't know who's due in here first, general government maybe, or I don't know how it is. Yeah, we'll start with general government. So we, we, you know, as long as we get who's ever coming in for a review, we, 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 we have ample time to... Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying, Jerry. I don't know. We need the whole book. You know, but yeah, we need the whole book. <laughs> yeah. If we have... Even though police might not come until January? Yeah, or? even though it's, it'll be done. Why it should be done. Get a piece of um, so if the 17th will work just fine with the schedule. Right. No need to do anything else. All right, moving down. Can I have, can I have one question? Of the, sure. Oh, oh, through the board. Yeah. Um, put it on my other hat, the CIP committee. We were told we were going to get some warrant articles sent to us a couple weeks ago. And no one has seen anything yet. Okay. I know, uh, according to when we had our meeting last month, Fred said he only had a couple more to go through. I know they're rising exponentially by the week, but um, if we could get that some of that information before our next meeting, or as we meet October 6th for the CIP committee, okay. and we'd like to have something if possible. Fred's on vacation right now, you know, so. Yeah, but I mean. Yeah, I'll bring it, I'll it, check on Like I say, our next meeting is October yep. 6th. Yep. I do have one point. <coughs> if you're finished, are you finished? Um, if you, for some reason, decide you guys don't want to go to those meetings, like the one you're going to go to, I think you'll enjoy it. I did. Um, I think it'd be really nice if you decide you don't want to go, or none of the select more want to go. Maybe you could ask somebody from the budget committee to go. Because we got to take advantage of that because I think it's a golden opportunity I've been. I think somebody else would probably learn from that experience on the back <coughs> too. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Well, we can all go. It's an open meeting. I'll go, but we should, a five selectmen should be a selectman that is representing us at that meeting. But moving on, any other questions for Jim? All right, Ms. Selectman. Um, Next, the Hampton um, Beach Precinct update. Okay. This has been a, a very good year for the precinct. Not all the businesses are able to say that, unfortunately. There continues to be a significant parking problem seasonally. Although, in our case, our new parking lot had a dramatic increase in revenue over prior years, even though we have fewer parking spaces. In addition to that, we've had a series of uh, <clears throat> meetings where we presented presenters on issues. The fire chief and the police chief spoke to the issue of evacuation. We've had a, a representative from FEMA speak on flood insurance. The vice chairman of this budget committee has spoken before the precinct on his role connected with the state and issues of climate change. Uh, We've introduced and apparently we're going to have a continuing relationship with the high school each year so they will present a musical uh, event at the Shell in June and we've already got a tentative date for next year with them so that appears to be working. An earlier suggestion of the chair of this committee was too late to implement it this year but we have been in touch with the recreation department and they are going to probably offer the seniors in the, or 
uptown community members an opportunity to see the sand sculpture event without the problem of parking when there really isn't any left. Uh, and maybe the rec department will be able to present a bus and drive them down there and leave the bus at the town parking lot for a bit of time. So th th we're kind of in flux, but a lot of what I think hopefully are positive things are going on. And that's about it. Thank you. Right. And Jerry, I, I don't know if you can top anything that <laughs> Nathan and Yeah, well we do I, like has been said, we have the SESPA contract we're gonna get into starting tomorrow night. That's all the support staff, the power of the professionals and monitors, home home monitors and cafeteria monitors and things. We're getting into that. And then we're gonna be getting into looking at Hampton Academy in terms of you know, how to reconfigure this school that's been built early 20th century, perhaps. I'm not sure exactly when, but I don't know. I don't think we'll ever be able to turn it into a 21st century situation. But try to reconfigure classrooms and get, get the space needed uh, for various subjects. And, uh, you know, we, we have and we, we, you know, we have gymnasiums, <coughs> gymnasiums there that are not legal size. They don't come with showers and toilets. That's a problem. We have uh, presentations on stage that are, that are given. It's, uh, it's not really a proper forum, I don't think, or venue for presentation stage shows and musicals. So those are factors that are going to be drivers as far as I'm concerned. I think you might be able to configure you know, the academy to get the classroom space needed. But those, are, those two things I just mentioned uh, might be big stumbling blocks for us. Um, and we're getting into budgeting, you know, the next, the, the next beginning, the school year beginning next July 1st. So we're going to be busy over the next month or two or three between the budgeting and the SESPA contract and the reconfiguring Hampton Academy if we can uh, and take care of some of the inherent properties of the building right now. The stairs is really steep. God, when you go from the second floor down to the first floor, those stairs like this. I don't know how many trips and falls might have occurred, but mm. I can see that as a big risk. Uh, and the toilets are, you know, there's not a lot of them and they're narrow. And I don't think we've got toilets that can take handicapped wheelchairs and things like that. So we, we've got a task ahead of us. I think we can get an academy reconfigured to give us the space we need for academics. We don't have to say and for some of the other things I mentioned, toilets and hallways and doorways. But it's going to be this, uh, you know, the lack of a gymnasium of any size, or not legal size, and having showers and toilets, you know, and, and a, a, a venue for presentations and musicals and stage shows and Christmas plays and so on and so forth. That is where we're going to fall. That's what we're going to have to look at hard. Could I make a comment? The, um, it's interesting, Jerry, that <clears throat> not that many years ago at the Winnicunnet High School, they had a, they addressed the uh, stage issue by building a beautiful auditorium and, as well, they had an issue with their gymnasium and they built a wonderful new gymnasium. Yeah. So the core of the building, you know, is, is, is workable. Yeah. Um, things that can be fixed. Yeah. And so I think that uh, if it's presented properly, I'm sure the people in Hampton will support it. We're going to work on it, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I, I'm a very frugal, conservative guy, so I, I'm going to be looking, you know, to get the job done, if you will, mm -hmm. and, and bring value to the table, mm -hmm. like we did on the fire stations, mm -hmm. two fire stations, and yep. brand new one at the beach, and completely refurbished one uptown for $5.2 million. That's the way to do business. You know what I mean? Yep. And uh, we really studied those plans, we participated mm. actively with Chief Silver, uh, Chief Silver, if you will, and a Church Street pump station. We got it, you know, in there. Wow, it's a beautiful pump station. <laughs> and we, you know, they, you know, that started off around something five and a half, six million, and and uh, we, we hammered away at it and got it down to four eight, and they brought it in a million, a million less. Mm -hmm. Jerry, how long do they think the process is going to, how long a process, I should ask? 
Period. For the for the Hampton Academy. Yeah. Well, Nate's got a schedule laid out. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, it you know, I, I, I forget the exact dates, but <clears throat> he's trying well, to bring can, it. He's trying he's trying to bring it in so that the first year that the state might get back to you know contributing something for new facilities. I don't know if that's 2017 or 2018. I don't know something like that. Is when he, he wants to be ready mm -hmm. for for if we're ready for he, told, he told us okay. 2017. Yeah, I'm gonna save a piece of that for new business. Yeah. Not to it so that's kind know. of where we are. Okay. We got our table full. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, the problem is, you know, you end up the re renovation almost costs as much as putting a new one up. Mm -hmm. We remember when I kind of and exit of high school it wasn't that much difference but I, I I'm gonna tell you you can't you build a school a new school up in Pole Farm Road you're gonna be talking 30 to 40 million dollars mm -hmm. taxpayers are not gonna go for that I don't believe mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to do the best we can there were only 15,000 people in this town mm -hmm. you know, this is yeah. average wage is 65,000 we got a third of our people that are considered seniors we just we gotta, we gotta keep this an affordable town to live in as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm all about. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. The last piece that um, is the monthly budget review is just, I just want to say something about that. I talked to Christy about getting them to us, monthly financials, a week sooner than we're getting them because we're sitting here in September and we don't have August. And I realize she has a um, big job to fill there and her first year taking control um, so there's you know no sense in pushing her right now because they're in the middle of doing budgets themselves but we had a good conversation yesterday and she is going to target it so that we have those reports a week before our regular monthly meeting so we meet the third Tuesday of every month. They should be ready the week yeah. prior to that so that you'll have time to review them. That being said, Mike, you had done some work and some highlights um, through August? Well, no, I not mean, through July. Yeah, through July. I, I just basically went through it and reviewed it uh, June and July. And uh, the deviation from comments I'd made before about the budget at the last meeting well, in the meeting before that, there really wasn't much change. There was one item that has been a problem since almost the beginning of the year to do with the snow removal overtime, administrative overtime. I sent that out a little, one little note in the email about that. And that's still a problem, but maybe if we don't have too much snow before the year's over, that'll work its way to okay. But other than that, looking at all the items in general and going through almost every line, I didn't see anything that really reached out and grabbed me at all mm -hmm. uh, compared to the new budget, which you all got a copy of. That's a different ballgame. Yeah, you put that in the email to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, That's last, by the yeah, way. Yeah, you might not want to try to print that out. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Well, 42 pages of it, yeah. Um, uh, I look to uh, Eileen. Yeah. Uh, by, by your leave, I'll make a minute or two comment on it. Go ahead. Uh, I, I looked at this report, it's through July, and you know, a lot of the percentages are, you know, within the 58.3% guideline, which is 7 twelfths of, of the year spending rate. A couple of things come out on me, though, come, came to me, though, is, is uh, you know, th those overtime accounts are, are, are either actually heavily spent or <coughs> going to be overspent. I see several in DPW, I see even the rec department. And, and, you know, if this is a default budget, I would think we would go out of our way to kind of control overtime accounts. But uh, I saw enough of them for me to make note of it, primarily in DPW and uh, REC. Uh, a few was one or so in fire police. But in addition, um, uh, I noticed that there are accounts like sidewalks. 26,000 we have we have budgeted for sidewalks. Not a dime has been spent. Right. And yet we have sidewalks that need repaired. Are we waiting for people to trip over and hurt themselves? Cracks and crevices. Not a dime has been spent on sidewalks. 
Mike, same thing with following that, Mike. While you were doing that, Mike was. Well, I just wanted to point right while you're on that. That sidewalk account's been like that for several years when you were a selectman also, Mr. Mitsunoi. And I was there watching you sit there at 26000 without a dime spent. But so when you want to pick on it, make sure you pick on yourself a little bit. But well, you know what, Jerry? Mike, I'm reviewing the budget here. Yeah. I know, but you're... I'm making a comment. I know you're making a comment, but make sure you understand that that 26000 yeah. has set in that account every set year that I can remember. Okay. Long right. before I was elected. All right. so, Gentlemen. What's I'm going to make a comment, Jerry, Ralph, to that. Okay, I'm not. And you're right. There's money that sits in accounts mm -hmm. year after year after yeah. year and goes nowhere but other than to the bottom line and someplace else. Yeah. We had a lengthy discussion last year, if you remember, everybody. Okay? And these are the things that I want you to focus on as we go into budget. We had a lengthy discussion about sidewalks, about a plan for sidewalks, and about the use mm -hmm. of that $26,000. And I guess my question going forward on my to-do list is, do we have an issue with not having enough funds because it had to go somewhere else to do the sidewalks, or do we have a manpower issue that keeps us from doing sidewalks? I'm not sure which it is. But we sat here and we left that money in the budget mm -hmm because there was a plan, and I haven't seen any work well, I mean, done, we, and I don't see any. We don't have the August financial, so there may be a sidewalk that. somewhere that we've we spent money We on. haven't spent that money ever over the last two or three years. We should strike it. Uh, we can't force them to spend the money. It was, it was brought up last year that that, that fund it sits and waits till the end of the year because he needs that money for elsewhere. Yeah. He okay. sat right there and told us that because I asked that, that what question. He said? Mm -hmm. That money is used when he needs it for elsewhere. Then why budget it? We no. need it for fluff. All right. <laughs> uh, same thing with repairs and maintenance and the storm. All I'm asking is you watch things like this. Yeah. Is the idea of going over the budget, oh, going over what has been spent, mm -hmm. keeping an eye on where the money has gone or hasn't gone, mm -hmm. all right, and then reflecting on that when we go line by line and ask yourself, do we want to fund that line? Or do it's always a Warren article, we're an SB2. So thanks, Jerry, on that one. I mean, it, the thing is, is, is if it's never going to be spent because of, then it's not real. Right. Okay. I point agree with point taken. I, I just can't deal with that. You know? Okay. Uh, and I was, I just made storm, storm drainage is the same thing. It's like 30 cases in there. Not a dime spent in, in terms of, uh, you know. Because there was a new EPA rule supposed to be coming out on the, on the, uh, treat, right. on the um, testing of the uh, water. That was supposed to be coming out earlier this, later on this year. Mm -hmm. and we took money, took money out of that for the catch basin. Was any of that drainage money tied into um, the grist mill? No. None of that was? Okay. That was for the, test, that was for the testing of the catch basins, the signage that was supposed to be implemented. That's what that's 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 that. That thing, remember that. You, re you remember last year the DPW director came in and had this discussion about the upcoming mandate for EPA right. relative to testing. And we took part of that and money into said, his paving fund. He said he estimated that the anticipated mandate would be $40,000. A couple months later, he came in and said that he overestimated, and mm -hmm. I believe the figure was, it was going to be implemented later on this year. Mm -hmm. so I believe he, I believe he said that he overestimated at forty thousand dollars, and he now believes it to be twenty thousand dollars. And we spent an hour or two in that meeting reallocating that twenty thousand dollars to paving certain streets. Correct. The forty thousand dollars went right into the default budget. <laughs> Even though the estimate had been changed to twenty, the forty thousand went right into the fat of the default budget. Uh, the fluff. Yeah. The 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 uh, whatever you want to call sure it. Sure did. Now last night, if you watched the Board of Selectmen's meeting, he announced that the EPA mandate never took place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> never took place. Yeah. And he's estimating that it will take place next year. <laughs> And that his new forty thousand dollar estimate is a conservative one. <laughs> All right. Um, 
I say do your homework. We'll have questions on that. Uh, I'm going to move it along a little. Uh, one there, there's comment. something sitting in the exec one in the minute, general. Jerry. Yeah, sorry. I'm gonna recommend uh, Brian. Um, personal administration was $69,000 over budget now. I don't even want to look at what's going to happen. What was that? This one. Which this one? One? Personnel one? administration. Page. Oh, page Oops. three of sixteen. The Oops. buyback program. Oh no, yeah, it's a buyback. We, we explained that a couple of months ago mm -hmm. in my email. Oh, you yeah. want me to explain yeah. that again, real quick? No, I'll We'll watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> something we're going to need to keep track of. Um, that was the only other comment I had. Okay. All right. Yeah, this 20K sitting in the uh, general government yeah. as an encumbrance, it seems to me that was came under controversy. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm, I misphased, but didn't we pull that 20K? It's on page 16 of 16 yeah. uh, under general government, under executive, the first line, it says 20,000 encumbrance. Mike, didn't that one get pulled off the table when... The handshake that Fred had made with some <coughs> printer to be the one that got pulled off was to do with about fourteen thousand, and that had to do with updating the ordinance books mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So there wasn't twenty k. Yeah, the twenty k no. was a different issue. But I'll have to look at my notes on that one. Yeah. If you, I, I if you want me to look it up, yeah. I can. No, I, we can I, talk about it later. I just, but it's uh, still encumbered this late in the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's still encumbered already. I yeah, didn't, that, I didn't that, notice oh, that. Oh, there's a few things that are still encumbered. We can talk about that later if you want to, Jerry, because I don't remember. I'd have to look that one up. I mean, that's the 20K. I don't remember that one. Jim, could I ask you to, for the next meeting, to update the encumbrances that may still be out there? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I could ask Christy for a yeah. list of them, but that won't give me an explanation as yeah. to where they sit. If you could do that, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, one of the things that we did not do last meeting that we have to do tonight. I Everybody should have a copy, and I, some of you don't, of our proposed budget for next year, which we haven't really proposed yet. Mm -hmm. It's like all of four lines. Same as last year, right? If you don't have a copy, well, that we haven't determined what it is. That's, that's the issue. Well, I mean, what's on the sheet? What, yeah. The sheet is, who needs a sheet? I have last year. That's why I'm asking if it's the same. All right. Same. Who needs a sheet? What happened is we did not finish this back in June. So when the selectmen reviewed our budget, they just plugged Sweet numbers job. in. Um, the same numbers as last year, which was okay on the idea that we might revise them tonight. And so just going down to where it says budget committee, the first one has our secretary. Now, Joan has been our secretary for a long time, but this isn't talking about Joan. It's talking about the position in general. Mm -hmm. All right. We, I passed the rates around on that, and we're coming real close to that 1850 based on the fact that we have expanded our meeting schedule. Probably also in true budget committee form, we pay the least for that position. And I am going to, there are a couple of sheets. I'm going to pass this one this way and leave it open to you quickly to make any adjustments on that. Can we discuss the um, budget committee's budget as a whole at this time? We're going to take a line by line. Okay four lines. We don't have to be here two hours. So we're going to do this line first. Okay. Okay. I wasn't proposing to be here two hours. <laughs> um, <coughs> I was going to simply suggest that we have seen, it, for those who have been paying attention to the Board of Selectmen's meetings and um, generally aware of, of uh, some of the expenses that are, are coming up. Um, 
the budget committee, I think, this year, you know, we've already done a lot of work, I think, this year, you know, in terms of getting educated on a variety of topics through the spring and again tonight with the town treasurer. And uh, I think that perhaps lays good groundwork for us to realize that now we have to hit these numbers with some votes. And um, we're going to see a lot of increases coming down the road. We have a, apparently a, a town manager contract, which I'd like the budget committee to get a copy of, the new town manager contract, which uh, shows, you know, much greater than a 10% raise there. And that kind of, you know, uh, increment in pay seems to be spreading elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I think that we, when we're dealing with our own budget, we need, especially when we're doing it right at the beginning of the budget season, we need to demonstrate some, uh, some fortitude and some leadership in, in finding a way to lower our budget. I agree. No matter what kind of hoop we have to jump through to do it, because we need to show leadership to the rest of the town that we're not just wanting to cut other people, we're willing to do it too. Tim? So I that was why I wanted to say on the general right. budget. Our itself. total budget? So everybody knows it's twenty five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Okay, we did lower the budget in the last couple of years. We by a thousand dollars by taking out legal. You get to a point, you cannot work with nothing. In O thirteen though, Riley. O thirteen we spent sixteen twenty four. <coughs> budget committee's budget actual sixteen twenty four. O thirteen. Yeah, that's because back then. Um, We've had a few changes. Some of the conferences that we go to used to cost us nothing. They no longer cost us nothing. They cost us $75 a person plus $10 a person for parking. That's you a, take your own cost. That's a good point. And the, and the expense associated with that is largely related to the, um, the budget workshop, which is really great. Well, and now recently, because we had the education from NHMA, We've learned that we're entitled to one free seminar here. The town so they could give us that budget uh, the, workshop the right town, here for free. The town is entitled to that. Let's go back and just take line by line. Let's go back to the secretary's line. We have 20, me we have 20 meetings in this calendar cycle. <coughs> okay? And the question is, do we want to stay at the same rate? No. We want to we relook at that position, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's too expansive. Uh, I think if we uh, make the workload less, that we might actually be able to uh, be both fair to the person doing the job and get this number down a bit. I see no way to make it less. We're, we're not How do we make it less? The, the, right now, we have uh, a contractor here that sits throughout the meeting, which, of course, is an expense to her personal life. She sits mm -hmm. throughout the entire meeting. Plus, she's, she's burdened with the, the task, apparently, of writing down what's considered important, and of course that's that's a that's a difficult task in itself, you know, for her to make that decision of what's important, and then we re review about what kind of comments were made, when the legal requirements for the minutes are really, you know, who attended the meeting, um, what motions were made, and how the votes were taken, and um, I think if we reduced the burden of the minutes to just that amount, just that just that content only. It would reduce the burden on, on the uh, contractor that we hire for that position. Additionally, you can consider that the Board of Selectmen, which has a lot more motions than we do, more of them legally binding than ours, All right. uh, so do you have that we could actually not require the presence motion, right, here in the, right here in this meeting. So I think what we ought to do is I think we ought to redefine that function and then, since it's a contract position, put it up or open it up for bids and then make a, a selection from that. We are dealing with next year's budget, remember. We're not dealing with today, I tomorrow, or next month, or whatever. We're dealing with next year's budget. So this is a good time for us to redefine so the job, set out a bid a bid time to, so people are can you making bid on a motion to That's what I'm doing. I so move that we, we redefine the job and, put out a, and, and, and allow for a window of time for bidding to take place and then evaluate those bits. We don't need to make a decision on this uh, right now, as far as I'm concerned. Do I have a second? What the There's no is. second that for discussion, because I have a comment. All right, second for discussion. I'm going to start down here with Sonny, and I'm going to ask everybody to try to keep it to about a minute. No, I, I won't get involved in okay. this one at this point. So. Jerry? I think we can advance ourselves a bit. I mean, the, the selectmen's meeting takes place. There's nobody there taking minutes that I can see. Mm -hmm. You have it all on television, and it's just, you, can, you know, 
Tim's got a point about just what the minutes need, really need to consist of. So I, 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 I kind of like where he's going with that. Well, the problem with that is that if the minutes don't include the discussion and there's a legal issue and it, it, the lawyers don't look at the a recording, they look at the recorded minutes. Gentlemen, so as, we go, the discussion. as we go around the table, each one of you will get a turn if you would keep it to a minute or less and not go back and forth, otherwise we'll be here all night. Jim? That's right now. I, I will uh, make a couple of comments. First of all, the selectmen have been doing the videotaping for quite some time, mm. and we found that that worked very well while I was a selectman. I didn't have any problem with that whatsoever. And when it comes to making the uh, minutes considerably briefer than they are here. I have no problem with that either because by statute you have to all you have to have is the date the members present and the time it starts the time it ends the motions the second and who what the vote count was on each motion you don't have to have any of these tangents that sometimes all boards get off into like Mike Pierce babbling on forever you don't need to put that in the minutes that is not required by statute. So I think that you know, it'd be in our best interest for not only would it save times for us reviewing the minutes as a committee uh, by having it briefer and taking it from the videotape, because the videotape is actually a very good record of what happens in this mm -hmm. meeting. And in fact, if you look at the videotape of the meetings, there's a lot of things that transpire that don't re aren't reflected in the meeting and vice versa. So I think it's best to take it right from the videotape, which is reality. Well, I believe the courts don't take the, accept the video. Excuse me, Sonny. I'm okay. going to keep going. The courts, the courts will, in fact, uh, you know, review the video if it's at, at, at variance with the minutes. If the minutes are challenged by either side. Uh, they will take any records that would uh, support a challenge of that mm -hmm. nature that has gone on many times. But I do think that we do need to show uh, leadership uh, uh, as we start getting down into uh, other people's budgets. If we're not willing to, you know, find one dime out of our own, what, what kind of credibility message are we sending out to the rest of the town? Mm -hmm. We've got to find some uh, something here. Brian. I find this ridiculous. But anyway, um, as if anyone has noticed lately, there have been no live meetings because we had a cable breakdown. So there were no live meetings to be able to receive. No, we're not going to use exactly. de your devices well, by as much as I hate to say it. About 50 bucks. Um, and that is wrong. I think the secretary has done it. I, we have gone over this every year since I've been on the budget, and I think we've got it down to where it really is a good document. The fact that nobody wants to look at it is your own problem. But um, I think she's underpaid as it is. And the fact that we have about a, at least an hour long extra added on to the meetings over the last year, mm -hmm. you know, that's just more time that she's here. Okay. I'm going to take this rotation as we're going around. I want everybody to look at that monitor right now. Well, you changed it. <laughs> That's okay. How many people do you see? Three. Mm -hmm. Saw three before that. Therein lies a problem with this committee. We are not a committee of five. We are a committee of 15. And you cannot see all 15 people in detail from there unless you get Got to go further out because you still don't have everybody. Go all the way out until you get all 15 of us in here. And who's who? And, if you, and who's who and who, whose name. That's, it's a unique problem that we have. We are enormous as a committee. And we have a problem that other boards and other committees do not have, which is why we have past couple of chairmen anyway mandated that the secretary be here so that she can look around the room, whoever that person is. Now, I started this as a budget, not to deconstruct the budget committee, to discuss a line item for budgetary purposes, to see if you want to leave it as it is or move it. I'm telling you, we've already increased meetings. We've increased times that we're spending in our meetings, and that cannot be done watching the video. I don't care if it's Oz, 
yaws or if you all brought a separate one in, we're not going to do that. And to furthermore say this, that is not our legal record. Our legal record in the town is our written minutes, which is why every board and committee has a secretary. And, ha and we s actually spend money across the board on that sheet to have the written minutes. That's not acceptable. Only the written minutes are from a legal standpoint. So, going on, Dave? I would concur with what the chairperson just said. Um, and as was said earlier, I think if anything, she's underpaid. Um, I find the minutes extremely valuable in addition to the fact that they're required by the state. Um, so I would, I would recommend that we keep the budget as is. This is a, certainly a hot potato. <laughs> the um, radical thinking, Tim, radical <laughs> thinking, outside the box, I don't know. The, I guess the question I have is that the selectmen used to have somebody present taking the minutes, and then they stopped. So what was the reason for that, and... And so how do they do the minutes now? Two questions. I, I, we have well, some I mean, selectmen the, here. The, Perhaps the they could answer The video is reviewed by um, either Christina, who was Fred's secretary, or another appointee in, uh, in, in, the, in the finance department, I think, wasn't it? I think and so. they review it, and then they take from it the minutes. And they present the minutes to the selectmen mm -hmm. okay, for now, review and acceptance. Okay. Now, about a week and a half ago, I turned on a Wednesday night, I turned on the television to watch yeah. the planning board. Yeah. And after 15 or 20 minutes of no sound, I finally changed the channel. I thought, does anybody not realize that there's no sound? So <laughs> you can't, and I can't read lips. So that would be a problem. Now, I know Tim has a recording device there. Um, but if you're watching a video and there's no sound, you oh, can't take minutes. It comes out gar a lot of uh, garbled stuff mm -hmm. as well. I mean, we've had a lot of problems over the last couple of months. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to, you know, point those couple of things. That was nice. But <clears throat> I'm very content with the status quo, and I'm not at all confident that people would spend hours reviewing videotapes, whereas a condensed type minute is something people are more likely to look at. If the goal is to reduce this line item, what is, what is the proposal to reduce it? We still have 20 meetings. Okay. So whether we contract this with somebody else or we continue with the process that we have now, it's going to require the attention of that individual for the total number of hours that we spend. In other words, if we, even if we have a private contractor who's sitting in their living room, they're going to have to sit there and watch the video for three hours <coughs> and record whatever is necessary off of that video. You mentioned that the Board of Selectmen, the selectmen have the minutes taken, or they, they record the minutes, or they record the meetings, and the minutes are then reviewed by a town employee Sitting up in the in the town manager's office, <laughs> not an individual sitting in their living room right. using their own equipment mm -hmm. to do that do that job. Right. We still have 20 meetings. Record now. Here it is. Oh, it's almost 10 o'clock. Yeah. So we're talking about having a contractor sitting somewhere for three hours, sometime during the course of the week or wherever, sitting and watching. That. Even if it does reduce the amount of the content of those minutes, it still is requiring a three-hour attentive person to watch that video and record the critical information that has to be taken and written. I am perfectly satisfied with the system that we have now, and I have vehemently opposed any change. Okay. Well, I, I think that not only are they a, a legal uh, record of the meeting, but I, I think they're a uh, historical record of the meeting. And while state may say that you, you have a minimum requirement, I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough for, for either a board of selectmen meeting or, or a budget committee or anybody else. <laughs> I, I think you need to add the flavor of the meeting. 
and I think it's good for people who are who are reviewing it. I think it's good for members who maybe were absent and are reviewing it. Um, so as, as far as putting only what's required by law in there, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, as far as contracting out, I probably haven't been here long enough to to have an opinion other than um, since I've been on the board, I, I don't see any need to change. Um, the minutes have been available to me. They've been done. I haven't seen anyone really changing them. Um, the only thing I could add is by looking at a comparison of, of who's paid, I, I think uh, our staff member is probably uh, underpaid, woefully underpaid. So um, I, I think it should stay where it is, uh, other than I think we should probably add to, uh, add to the salary. I think a zero percent increase this year would be setting an example for the rest of the people that have been before the selectmen this year so far <laughs> with percents much higher than that. Mm -hmm. I, they get a default budget this year. What are they going to get next year? Mm -hmm. And that's a sad thing to say now when we haven't even <laughs> seen the budget yet. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. 10, 12, 14 percent isn't going to, isn't going to work. I'd, I'd be in favor of leaving this alone as long as the secretary is willing to do the work. Jim? You know, if we have 20 meetings, that's 92.50 a meeting. That's $23 an hour she's making for four okay. hours. Hey, but here's the thing. So uh, what do you want to cut the hours, make a min meeting <laughs> yeah. two hours long, and that's it? Yeah. Here's, what, what do we start? Here's here's where we are. <laughs> that 18.50 doesn't cover 20 at the current rate. Yeah doesn't cover 20 meetings. Uh, it's $1,900 for 20 on. meetings. So on a little thin budget here, so just leaving it at that. I agree. Okay. I agree with Mike. Leave it alone. There's no increase. Everybody else coming in with an increase. And the last thing I'm going to add to this um, is that Joan had a seminar tonight and raced over here from there because I couldn't get anybody to cover her, going to all the people who cover for other boards and this and that, for a number of reasons. One, we're the cheapest. Two, she's been the most dedicated one to us. And when you say put it out to bid, I couldn't get any takers for tonight, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And I called everybody I knew of, and not only everybody I knew of, but everybody who referred me to somebody that I didn't even know of. So before we vote, I think that you should just wrap your head around that one. Yep. The other thing is that, ask yourself this, we run a tight budget on this committee. We do set an example all the time, all right? But before we take a vote at how we end up, we're doing more meetings. We're taking long, longer times to do them. We've become more difficult through the years because maybe we know more and we're looking at more. But that translates into more work for whoever our secretary is. That being said, I don't have any other comments. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second. I'd like to follow up if I might briefly. You've already done it. I'm only going around once. What was the motion again, please? Uh, to re redefine the position, the secretarial position, and allow bidding to take place. Good thing she was there to read that back. Right. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to remember it. <laughs> and that was seconded by Michael, and now for a vote, gentlemen. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion fails. Are there any other motions concerning the amount? on this line. I will make a motion that we increase the amount by 3%. I will second that motion. That comes to 5550 by my, which isn't much. Comes to what? What? 55. Nope. No. Go ahead. What is it? Oh, my calculator is approved. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I'll your, your motion there. is My motion is to increase it by 3%. That line. It's yes, fifty-five fifty. Oh, Not the rate, only the line. Right. Which will bring the stipend up to how much per meeting? Keep in mind, guys, it's not just the time at the meeting. You yeah. have to go home and 
create have to transcribe it, that's right. And, and then send it out. At 1850, it's 5550. Right. That's what I had. Right now, yep. it's 5550. Add it to that 1850. 50. No. No. Yeah, 3%. Yeah. He, he wants to go by 3%. You want to increase it by 3%? 3%. I wish I brought the 1850. 5550. What's your goal with that? Are you, are you increasing the rate or are you increasing the whole line? I'm increasing the, the, whole line. the line. That line. Up to yes. what amount? So, so are, you just, are you just trying to cover that extra meeting? He made a specific motion. No, I'm just inviting the line item so it would come to 1950. 95 27. Right. So you want to just bring it up to 1950, which is clearly paying for the 20 minutes at the current rate. Yes. Wait, wait, wait a second. Okay. That's adding 27 cents per meeting. <laughs> No, no, no. no, can I clarify it? Yes, go ahead. All right. What he's looking to do, I just said we added meetings to the year, so now we have 20. We've added a few more. This year we had one in June that we didn't have the prior year. Um, what I'm driving and, at. But, my, Richard, I'm sorry. Right. What he wants to do, 20 meetings at $95 a meeting. We're leaving the rate as it is. But we have extra meetings that the 1850 no longer covets. We need $1,900 on that line to cover 20 meetings at $95 a meeting. <coughs> He's made a motion to raise that line by $50 so that we at least have enough money in the budget to pay the current rate for all 20 meetings. Is that he should, clear? He should withdraw the 3% because the numbers don't come. No, right. no. Uh, leave uh, it at uh, 3 but it's not It's not no, 19, 19, Specified 3%. $1,905.50. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's your motion. Nineteen hundred dollars. There it is. No, no, three no, percent. No, it's nineteen hundred and five dollars. Nineteen oh five. The motion was three percent. Three percent. Right. Period. So if it's nineteen hundred dollars and fifty cents. Nineteen oh five. Nineteen oh five. Divide that by twenty meetings. No, I'm not going to do that. You'll have five dollars and fifty cents left over. The motion was three percent. So you won't go over. All right. Do I'm I just going to try not, not to fall the rest of the town in a 9% raises, but I right. feel that she does, does deserve a little <laughs> more, something. But she's not getting any more. All we're doing is paying for the extra right. meeting. <laughs> all right. That's all. So he, That's he the motion. Do I have a second? I second it. Have a second? All right. All those in favor of a 3% increase, that will bring that line to 1905. Yes. 50. No discussion. I think we've discussed this. No thing. discussion at all. How did you get the count, Joe? They're the only two. Just a bunch of chatter. Unorganized chatter. Here we go again. All right, I'm moving down to legal expenses. I see no reason to put anything else back in there. And it's impossible to decrease it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So therefore, we set a good example. So we could increase it by any percent. Zero want. increase on zero. All right. Do we have any discussion on anybody who feels we need money in there? On what? Legal. Legal. Outside Legal. counsel. Mm -hmm. no, no. 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 No, internal. We're going to hire our own attorney. And the reason for that, um, Jerry, is that Mark Gerald assured us if we need to go to outside counsel, he will okay it as part of his outside counsel budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we took it. We took the thousand dollars out last year. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, right. until I get to a point where that doesn't happen, I see no need to put it back in. Staff development. That is the seminars that we go to. They used to be free. They are no longer free. I would like to comment on, if I may, when I first joined the budget committee, we had to pay for our own training, right. and we did, and we did. And I make a motion we remove that to make that uh, staff development zero. <clears throat> Any other comments on that? When I came on, no, I agree with you. I did not pay for the first right. two years, and I went to uh, I went to the selectmen, I went to the budget committee twice, and we didn't have. That was the agreement we had back in when <coughs> LTC was ripping us off, but. Uh, we, they were free. 
I would like to think we were part of that organization. Yeah. I would like to think that we could approach an HMA and have that done every year in house for us here and it would certainly be the benefit to every department head as well. Here's the problem what? is that that is not a decision that we can make or I can make. That's a decision that would have to be made by the Board of Selectmen and we just don't have the ability to do that. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. The, um, the budget numbers that we're dealing with right now, the budget committee budget. Are you talking about yes, what we're talking, talking about, about right now? Yes, talking about that particular line item and the specific problem that you raised. I'm just putting it in context. This is coming, this is going to the town manager, which will then be blessed by the Board of Selectmen, and then it's coming back to us again in the actual budget, right? So we'll have another crack at this uh, in just a couple months. So yeah. I just want to just want to put that in context. And relative to this particular line item, I think your point is well taken. Um, and, and how we might proceed with it is simply let this line item sit as it is and make a query to the uh, Board of Selectmen that if, uh, if they're going to continue with what appears to be standard operating procedures and not use the NMHA's free workshop, that we be allowed to use that uh, and then we can make an adjustment once we get an answer based on that answer from the board of selectmen. What, what is the three hundred? Otherwise, I just shouldn't leave it right where it is. What does it represent? Three hundred bucks. It's sending uh, three people workshop. going to three work. Yeah, three. Three people it's going three. to yeah. three workshops. To the workshop. Three to one. Yeah. It's a hundred bucks. Seventy-five. It's seventy-five. Actually, not my plus parking. <laughs> this ten. <coughs> Plus anything else that leaves a little bit or anything we may have to buy from an HMA as far as printed material goes or now they're putting things on um, online but you still have to pay for it. Keep in mind, Jerry, we have another crack at this in a couple of months when it comes back to us. I so mean, until we get an answer from the Board of Selectmen, I think you know, it makes sense to we'll just let it sit the way it is. All right. Okay. I'll go on. I'll retract okay. my motion. Yeah. All right. Move on and off that one. All right, our supply budget is. We're not spending any money in there, and we didn't last year either. <clears throat> we budgeted 350 in 013. We spent 164. We budgeted 350 this year. We spent 29 bucks. There's a line item that can be cut. Oh you know, by at least half. Well, when you, when you do that, uh, let me tell you, you want to make the copies for all of us. Oh, we're not. We're, I, <laughs> what do you do? Talking not about making spent. the copies I mean, of what for there. all of us? Well, I made copies for everything you have in front of you tonight. Well, that's easily done. You just have it run off on one of those high-speed printers uptown that cost you almost nothing compared to any place else. Michael, huh? the budgets in these departments, okay, that come in does mm -hmm. not include copying for the budget committee. We went around with this. When we I did, wanted and I report. told you that the town already told right. me. Everybody uptown said it's not. It's still available to us to use. It's if not you don't available believe me, to go us and ask to use. them. All I've right. already done that. I'm not going to argue with it. That's a fact. It's and available for us. You to know use. what? At 10 o'clock, I'm not going to argue about this either. I went to the town manager, and I'm going to tell this committee from you, chairman, that when I met with the town manager, unequivocally, we do not have free printing in town hall. All right. So unless you all want to take it on you to print out everything from your own computers, we need something in that line. Oh well, yeah, I, I'm not saying we eliminate. That's all. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Okay. I will volunteer to do all the printing you've been doing for the fee you've been charging that expense account for the last couple of years. Oh, I will do that for nothing. We've because only spent twenty nine dollars this year. <laughs> yeah. I know. I said the last couple of years. I have. What are we spending? One point four. Under nine hundred and one a. Can we have a specific motion by someone, please? Yeah, I'll make a motion. We cut the line in half. I'll second. One fifty. Three fifty. Do we have a second for that? Yeah, Michael seconded it. All right. Let's vote on that. All those in favor of no cutting discussion? that line in half. I'm in favor. I'm in half. Okay. Three in favor. All those opposed. Leave it alone for them. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of leaving the supply line alone. Oh, actually, I need a motion. So I'll make a motion to leave that line item. Let's leave it alone for now. I'll second it. 
We'll get another crack at it, as you pointed mm. out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's ten All o'clock. those in Let's, favor? You know. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, I move we adjourn. All those opposed? I think we can be done. Are you opposed? All those opposed. I think we can be done. You're abstaining. Okay. I move we adjourn then, Chairman. So you have two opposed. We're not adjourning. If you want to leave, you're free to leave. Yes. 10 o'clock. Minutes. People won't be here anymore. Okay. How many vacant seats? Ooh. Ooh. We have a candidate? Item 11. Minutes. Okay. Minutes. June 17th. What do we do with Bennett? Where the hell did they come from? No. Any corrections to page one? Joe, the um, one correction to page one. Pat Collins actually resigned prior to that meeting. Prior. Okay. Okay, prior to that meeting. Okay, page two. Page three and page four. I have a question on page four because I do read the minutes, Bob, with great care. All right. What's the question? I don't have a question. I have a correction. That's the correction. On page four, it states at this time, Chairman Chem Latimer tabled the discussion. No such thing occurred. I went over and over the video. There was no mention at all of tabling and discussion. That's correct. Th that should be stricken. Mm -hmm. Simply not as on the I video. As I recall that, I called that out of order and asked for an adjournment. But <laughs> I rather than push this. That's what I believe yeah. happened, mm -hmm. but for no the sake table. of actual correction, she I will... for an adjournment of the meeting. That's that correct, but she didn't... This, the statement I'm asking to be stricken, it says, at this time, Chairman Latimer tabled the discussion. Oh, there right. was no such verbiage That's stated right. at all. Nothing even close to called, it. You just called for a motion to adjourn. She called for a motion, adjourn. Adjourn. Right. For a motion to adjourn. That's correct. Right. Joe was right. You call it out of order, a motion to adjourn. Right. Motion to adjourn. Right. So fix that. Okay. Another correction. And following that, it says, Anne called for adjournment of the meeting. You actually called for a motion, and then, then you subsequently called for a vote. Uh, so this is just uh, you know, not reflective of, of what happened. Uh, you didn't call for adjournment of the meeting. You called for a motion That's to right. adjourn. And, we did and take then a there vote. was a vote, and there's no vote reflected in the minutes. Merely a proclamation the meeting was adjourned at 19. Okay. Correct. We did call for motion. We did get that. It was seconded. And that's all on the video, just, just for that information. Got it all right here if you want to review it. No. Nope. We're no. good. Why was it on the video? I'd like to make a motion. It was on the video. No. It was on the video. It was on the video. But not in the count of the vote. Second. The vote was called. Well, hands went up, but no one counted right. the vote. Except Joan's going to go back Okay. So and we'll, review we'll review it. them next so we'll, meeting. So we'll, we'll finalize it the next minute. If you would go back, review the, the tape for the motion. I got if it all you right. recall, there was all kinds of things yes. happening, <laughs> and it was impossible to count any vote. It was a mess. Well, it wasn't it your was. job to count the vote anyway, Mr. Chairman. It was a mess. Your job to record it. I'll go back. Okay. I'll withdraw that motion. <laughs> yeah. We'll and if you want, Joan, I have this all queued up right here. You want to do it. No. Moving on to old business and the vacancy that we have on this committee, um, that will continue to be open. Have you had any candidates or <laughs> victims? I don't have, yeah, no take is <laughs> rich. Um, but, uh, right, never mind. All right, all right. no, I, there have been people who have expressed an interest, um, but I don't have anybody who has actually come forward and put the name in. Oh, as I recall, the last meeting we had was uh, for someone to submit a letter of right. interest. Right, right. My last. It, it, it does not affect our function. No, no, I'm just curious. Um, so we will continue. However, in, in the past, we've put a deadline on it. It'll just continue to be open until somebody comes forward and requests to be seated with us. It might be a good idea to. 
post the opening on the uh, town's website if mm -hmm. possible. Okay. The point's all taken. I think it's on the town website already, yeah? No. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. New business. Anything under new business? <laughs> Nothing? All right. I have a couple of things for next agenda. The only area that we haven't explored and in coming into us has because next meeting is a regular meeting, mm -hmm. all right, um, would be a CIP report. And I don't mm -hmm. know how, just a consensus on how you'd feel to have a formalized CIP report brought in for the next meeting, much in the same tone that we've had everything else brought in, the treasurer, the mm -hmm. trustees, and all that, to get a feel for the projects that are on the drawing board. Yes, Brian, we need the six. You can bring that in yeah. for us. I okay. can live without it. Mm -hmm. We're good with that? Okay. Good. All right. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. That's all I had under new Ten business. Six. Yeah, we're good. All Ten right. Six. I promise you. Yes. That's our next. Everybody CIP have meeting. the new yeah. agenda? Yes. Yep. Rip up your old ones. Mm -hmm. um, this one has gone, well, once it started to go out to department heads, they had a few changes to make. So this is, this is the newest one, and pretty solid as it sits right now okay it has skirted all the holidays our next regular meeting is the 21st we should have the budget books by the next regular meeting and then remember right after that on the 30th the week later we will have our first budget session now I broke municipal down in three parts this year instead of two so that we'll have enough time ask the questions you want to ask and not be rushing anybody we went from one night to two nights now we're up to three nights this is where the meetings have built Madam Chair I move to, to adjourn I have a second second at, at 1009 1009 thank you